Hey, what's going on, ecosystem? Welcome back again to Tuesday Night's Live on ATI Auto Business, the Car Should Be Business channel. My name is Jay. You know, my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation to you wherever you are because your automotive business des deserves the latest in transportation news. And we're live. So, do me a favor. Please click the time code links in the video description below. Uh, that'll allow you to jump ahead if you're watching on demand. Please do remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you for watching ATI. We do appreciate it. Uh, so did you know that if you're still paying the same rates to get cars moved that you were before COVID, that you're slowly putting a carrier out of business? Sorry about that. Uh, but why do so many dealers, remarketers, and lenders assume that cars will move at the price they calculate? Some would say, good luck with that. Some do say that. And we don't really like this topic either. But whether you're pheasant hunting, having dinner, or wondering where in the world your car is, I'm telling you right now, you already know everything else costs more, and that includes car shipping. So tonight, we have John Larrick of Larrick's Transport, Ola, who works in car dealer inventory, Tyrone Mixon, and Lloyd Vanover, both owner-operator car haulers in different market segments, and Ty Thompson, Cars on the Move. See if you can spot a theme tonight. And please, join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, break out of your vertical. Because it's Tuesday Nights Live on ATI Auto Business. My name is Jay. I'm your host. Welcome back to the show. again on a Tuesday night on ATI Auto Business, the car treatment business channel. Too much? Too much in the intro? Viewers dropping like flies? You know, I know it's not popular. Uh, sorry, that's what the news is all about. Um, but I want you to feel welcome. Let's start there. Please do feel welcome. It's ATI Auto Business. Everybody's welcome here. Dealers, carriers, brokers, dispatchers, tech, insurance, equipment, everybody in automotive, shippers, first-time researchers, please say hello in the live chat. Let us know what you're looking for. Let us know what you do, what you're looking for. What's your question? There's There, there are questions. I know there are questions, not just tech questions, rate questions, need help moving my vehicle, need help selling my equipment. We're going to go into industry news, and we're going to look and see. You know, let's get a let's get a slice of what's happening and try to move quite quick, fast. Um, we're going to bring in Ty Cars on the Move to help me introduce John Lyric of Lyric's Transport. John is back. He was here a few weeks ago. Happy to have him back. This is another carrier show. It's not for carriers though. This is education for the rest of the ecosystem. So bear with me as we attempt to extricate information. Ola is here. He works in dealer inventory. Ola was with us a few weeks ago. 
Amazing information. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Tyrone is with us again, owner-operator car hauler. Lloyd Vanover is with us again, owner-operator car hauler, working in different segments to help build the full picture. And that means we need your help, too. We want you to jump in the live chat, say hello. Uh, hey, do us a favor. Got an extra like? Please leave one. You can share, you can copy, you can click click plus save, give a super thanks. You can do all that. But if nothing else, just give us a thumbs up. We do appreciate that. Also, you know that if, you, if you're ready to pick up the phone and talk to a human being, Ty Thompson, 413-417-483-2764. He's even in the live chat. Always available on demand or live in the comments on social media at the trade shows oh thanks chris i'll tell you what let's do this we're going to go into live chat right after this so stick around we'll be right back location services collateral recovery with pinpoint precision and advanced proprietary technologies your single source for nationwide collateral recovery ls recovery certified and compliant ls skip Experienced Recovery, LSPR, Advanced Plate Recognition, LS Impound, Precision Capture, LS Remarketing, Nationwide Auction Partners, LS Keys, Professional Locks, LS Transport to any destination, LS Titles, Verified Documentation, LS Auto Notice, Secure Fulfillment. One contact, one contract, we do it all. Location Services. Recovery Skip, LPR, Remarketing Keys, Transport and Titles. Location Services provides nationwide collateral recovery with pinpoint precision. One contact, one contract, Location Services. Links in the live chat, phone number, email, website. Let's go into the live chat. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris, first here tonight, making martinis in the super chat. We sure do appreciate it. Um, all donations go back to the channel, and thank you so much. We're trying to accomplish a lot. Um, and, you know, we're slowly having an effect. Slowly. Oh, uh, First in here is Kimberly, Auto Transport Intel. Welcome to Tuesday Night's Live. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for helping in the live chat. National Car Shipping Inc. is back again so soon. Hello to you. Thank you so much for saying hello. And if you see, you know, if you got, you know, you, you, you're like, man, I'm going to type this. Type it. Just type it. Uh, Ty is here. This is where remarketers get their car shipping business. Uh, some. Not enough yet. We'll get there. Because we get, well, we don't really talk transportation. Really? All right. So you're having trouble getting your car moved, but you don't talk transportation? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Carlos is here. ACB Logistics in the house. What is going on, Carlos? Poe is here. Hello, Poe. Thanks for saying hello. That's cool. Daryl Schneider is here. Hello to all. What's up, Daryl? Chris Chamberlain. Hello, everyone from rainy New Jersey. Where it's not raining. <laughs> uh, Ola is here. What's up, Ola? Good evening to you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for agreeing to be on the show tonight. I know it takes time out of your schedule, but I mean, what else is more important? Well, some stuff, I suppose. Family. I think, actually. Family, Jay. It's a family show. Uh, Muzi is here. Truckify. What's up, Muzi? Degbo Logistics says hello. That's awesome. Thank you guys for saying hello. You know, um... We don't love, I don't even know where to start. We, you know, this, is, this topic is a downer. But here's the thing. Um, when you see Facebook rants become national news, well, you know something's changed. And I can prove it in industry news tonight. I will prove it. That what, was, what used to be a Facebook rant is now national news. And that's how you know when you're tapping on the pipes long enough, something's happening. 
So there you go. Brokers need to all up deposits and carrier pay. More money for everyone and the clients will pay. Here, here. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, this is what makes it such a tough topic. Because the brokers will tell you, well, it's not, it's not our fault. Uh, the shippers and the dealers and the remarketers and the lenders, they're, they won't pay the rates that we need them to pay. And so, uh, yeah, as, as stuff rolls downhill, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get further down the hill. What's neat is we now have brokers on this channel. We have carriers, brokers, dispatchers, dealers, auction reps, tech, equipment and insurance. Now we need more of the auto remarketers. So we've started meeting remarketers and consigners. We've had, you know, guests from the IARA on here car conference and they're in touch with auto remarketers and consigners we're also in touch with recovery the recovery industry who is also trying to bend the ear of the lender and the remarketer and the bank so we're going to keep doing our part to grow the knowledge in that direction it's not easy uh nothing ever is but if we just you know if we just give the microphones to the largest contributors and read press releases, we're definitely not educating anybody. So we don't do that either. All right. So it's an ATI auto business, dangerous business channel. We have a lot to do, but I, I see we're making progress and that's really exciting. Daryl Hall, Hall Auto Transport is here with us again. Thank you, Daryl. Central needs to remove dealers from posting and that would up the business for brokers. And then we need to all charge more. And again, great point. Keep saying these things because you're making uh, you're making a great argument. Now talking about Central Dispatch, um, Central Dispatch, not on, they're not on this channel, they're not on the show, but we do know that uh, there are folks over there listening. When we on our Thursday show, we lock we talk about what's happening with updates on Central. We get thanked for talking about that. Um, so. If we're gonna if we're gonna get the attention and get the information out, uh, we have to keep putting it putting in the live chat is a great first step. That's awesome. I'll pay double for Central if they did that. Well, it's interesting you say that exactly. That's and I think that's part of one of the problems we have is, uh, <laughs> what if they take you up on that? Okay, National, we'll fix that and we want you to pay double. But yeah, essentially, Daryl, stop moving cheap freight, and and that, that, that and I say this too on Thursdays on uh, thermonuclear Thursdays is that you're never going to get everybody together on the same page. There won't be a strike. Nobody's put putting the band back together, and I know that's awful. But you know that many shippers, remarketers, lenders, banks, etc., are counting on us staying disorganized somewhat disinformed they wish we were more professional in the way we operated on central but if it's cheap eh, whatever that's where we're at that's where we've been how much longer will we stay there i don't know seems like the wick is burning a little close so please keep saying hello please keep voicing your opinion and your understanding of your business. Because we are trying to educate the rest of the ecosystem. And uh, that's what we're doing here. All right, man. It's Tuesday Night's Live. Let's kick it off. Let's go into some industry news right after this. Stick around. Super Chat is open. We'll be right back. Transport Auto Quoter is by far the leading auto quoting software on the market and the only auto quoter with a pro version that comes preset with accurate pricing for anywhere in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it. The best part is that no change with your current software is needed. Just plug TAQ in and start booking jobs. Carriers can easily plug TAQ into their current websites and start making money right away. I bet you're wondering how we do this instantly and accurately 24-7. Well, constant analytics is the key. 
Our Price Watch team is constantly monitoring current market conditions, paying close attention to seasonal and quick moving industry changes. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and data to maintain good pricing, time that most of us just don't have on a daily basis. So free yourself up. Using TAQ Pro is really a no brainer. Save time and money, maximizing your leads and optimizing your online investments. You'll finally be able to sleep well at night knowing that TAQ is on the job selling for you 24 7. Never missing a potential job. What would you do if you could find an auto shipping quote and broker software you can trust? Provide instant, accurate quotes online with Transport Auto Quoter by Superflow Systems and move with Pro ABD CRM. Visit superflowsystems.com. Links in the live chat. Thank you so much. Here we go. It is now time. Do I have the drum roll ready? Really? Uh, it is now time for... It is, in, it is industry news. We are on... Show 262 in a row on a Tuesday night. Everybody's carrier concern. Now, it would seem that uh, we're not all on the same page of what is our biggest concern. I can tell you this. An upside-down, empty car hauler? I think we can all agree that would be concerning. Are we closer to that than ever before? Maybe. We did uh, What Makes a Great Car Hauler. Important topic if you're hiring a car hauler, which it seems like everybody is. Um, and then we also had Carriers Unfiltered where we wanted carriers take the microphone on a Tuesday and talk. So we, you know we talk about connecting the front of the store and the back of the store. We're absolutely serious about it. We're doing that again here tonight. When we look at the ecosystem and figure out who are we talking to tonight, carriers and shippers. Carriers talking to two shippers please listen we'll take we'll take one shipper listening at a time uh-huh always be closing that's right always be closing but we don't have any cars all right that's interesting um yes i talk about these things on thermo nuclear thursdays on dispatching live it just so happens the uh, the cloud has reached Tuesday night. Now, one could argue that, well, what we really need to talk about in the carrier world is, you know, what's, what's going on with the app and the tech? Uh, yeah, and it's important. But this is not the biggest news in auto transport. It just seems like it. But if you don't know that Central Dispatch is phasing out their search to an updated new search... Watch Thursdays. Get a taste. Update that app. How hard is it? I don't know. Ask the guy, and it's raining, and he's slipping on the upper deck in the mountains with no signal. You then ask him how hard it is to update the app. We talked about uh, Ford dealers giving six weeks to decide if they want to continue selling EV. Well, that's going to be a, uh, an important topic tonight. Um, but how about this? Are they trying to put us out of business? This was sent in. This is an actual post. You no, man, no. Six hundred. You're it's over six hundred miles. Making what is that? Two fifty a truck. You are going out of business. I'm just telling you. It doesn't seem like anybody else is going to talk about this. So we're gonna. Don't book that. Factory Custom Sun Country 53-foot drop deck with two additional hydraulic rams. Ready for sale. Oh, oh, that's not enough? Let's do another one. I got a full business for sale. Two drivers, dispatcher, trucks. They're selling the dispatchers. Three car, four car, DOT, MC, take it all. 175 k and it's your business now. It'll be your problem. Uh, here we go. This is exactly why brokers are taking advantage of rates. Someone took a load. Now, this is kind of a, this is a freight load, but the, the, the principles apply. Hey, can you do 2,700? Broker says, I just got offered 1,900. 
Guy says, good luck with that. Real exchange. So here we go. It's no longer just on Facebook. We're going to see more of this. This is on Freight Waves. Lone Star dedicated, ceasing operations. Nearly 90 Texas company drivers losing their jobs. Why? They don't, what, it's, they don't like counting money anymore? Well, all right. David McGarn, president and owner of Lone Star, confirmed he's shutting down the company. Oh, here, you can't see that. Let's do this. Uh, 90 drivers losing their, uh, losing their jobs after 12 years in business. At this point, I'm just getting rid of a headache. I don't like what's coming down the pike. Company's still profitable. The margins get thinner and thinner. Interest rates going up. Price of parts has tripled. Cost of equipment is outrageous. Main reason I kept the company was because it provided jobs. But he's not adding. He, he's added that he's not planning to file for bankruptcy, and the drivers will be paid once they return the equipment. He's not going that route. But uh, yep, it's happening. Um, and we saw this record shipping costs added to automotive supply chain woes. But you... oh yeah, Jay. Uh-huh. Uh, here's a real one. I just found that pro- progressive rates went up another seventy five percent, and it's been years since I got a ticket. Yep, when insurance goes from twenty grand a year to thirty thirty two, but rates went down. That's when you know it's time to find another career. But you know, Ty. It's just me and you here. The FMCSA eyes uh, plan to require electronic identification technology for commercial vehicles. See, and this is the kicker. Because not only do the rates blow and everything went up, but then on the government side, man, they just want more and more and more. What's that going to cost? Because you know it ain't free. The FMCSA is asking the trucking community to weigh in on whether every commercial vehicle used in interstate commerce should be equipped with electronic identification technology that can wirelessly communicate a unique ID number when queried by federal or state motor carrier safety personnel. The tech could be used to identify a parked truck or truck in motion. Oh, yeah. Sign me up. Uh, Improve the efficiency and effectiveness of roadside inspection. Oh, it's a safety issue. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, then we'll pay out the nose. Yeah. Send over the forms. Americans are running out of money, and big companies like Target and Walmart are noticing. Are the auto remarketers? Huh. Uh, oh, there's a chance your car will be stolen. <laughs> Thanks, Kia boys. Off your truck. Uh, Buttigieg announces nearly $40 million in grants to expand truck parking. Oh, man. Well, I mean, that'll help, but... God, couldn't we got that 10 years ago? Whatever. Um, Here we go. Here's a message from Joel Kennedy at the ARA. We'll be talking more with Joel in the coming days. ARA recently completed a survey of the industry about vehicle and lot storage. This will blow your mind. Vehicle storage is a big expense category. Revenue from vehicle storage has been shrinking due to lower negotiated daily storage fees and fee storage periods. Sounds a lot like auto transport. A recent uptick in arson attacks at recovery agent lots has been another hit to an already thinning insurance carriers and increasing premiums. All right, here we go. 71% of respondents have between one to three vehicle storage lots, and over 50% of those agents lease their lots. 40% of agents who lease their lots reported their rents increased by more than 10% in the last two years. Two-thirds of all agents responded that their lots can accommodate a maximum of 200 cars at any time, which are stuffed to the gills. 80% of respondents reported that on average vehicles remain on their lots 10 to 30 days. Man, do we have a lot in common with recovery, and we didn't even know it. Potential solutions. Expand existing agent lot capacity, since the likelihood of new agencies starting up is low. Accelerate movement of recovered collateral from recovered agent lots. And address fair storage fees and eliminate free storage from contracts. Uh, From Mike Buchanan on LinkedIn, value is dropping again, which is making everyone a bit nervous. From fleets looking to liquidate vehicles by end of year to dealers that are not moving vehicles like they were and even financial organizations worried about repos. Going to be an interesting Q4. Amen. 
Hey, good morning. Weather hit pretty down hard there. Uh, I suggest you call every dealership before you load any units. You cannot bring the units back. You are responsible for them. But you know, 39 cents a mile, why not? Send in your comments. I love them. You can send in the news. Uh, send it to autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'll take memes, uh, PayPal, news, and photos. This is how you get your car shipping news. What you want to do is you want to put it up on the big screen because you know what time it is every Tuesday night. Well, most Tuesday nights. We do. Uh, are you a car shipping guru? Play Ask Larry. Who is ready for question one? Here we go. About how much of the time... Oh, really? I'm going to pause for station identification here. I think... I think... All right. You know what? I can do this. All right. The questions are backwards. I got answers first, then questions. Okay. That's okay. I can fix this. All right. Here we go. About how much time do carriers have left before Central Dispatch shuts off its old search? Is it a day? Is it a week? Is it a month? Or is it a year? How much time do carriers have left before Central shuts off its old search? If you watch on Thursdays, you know this cold. Well, you should. And the choices are a day, this is approximately a day, a week, a month, or a year. How much time do you got left? Because I know, listen, I know what? Half the audience, at least a quarter of the audience, looks at Central Dispatch at least once a day. So this is important information, and therefore it's a question. Don't everybody all cram up front at the same time? What's an auto remarketer? Awesome! We're so glad you asked. Oh my gosh. Thank you. All right. So an auto remarketer, see, this is the problem, actually, is that auto remarketers, they know exactly who they are because they're the ones who own, essentially, they own the vehicle, whether it's in repossession, whether it's being paid, leased, rented, they own it. Somebody owns it, and that's a lender, a bank, or a company, or a consigner who works at a fleet, but they own the vehicles. You and I, we're just, you know, schleps, and we just work here. But, um, all right, that was a little. But the point is that an auto remarketer really doesn't know what you go through. The average auto remarketer does not know what you go through to get a vehicle moved. They don't know what the recovery agents go through. They don't realize how these low rates, they don't even, I don't even know if they know their low rates, are killing us. They don't. And they're the ones whose attention we need to get. That's not easily done, but essentially they're the ones who, when, when the broker or carrier or whoever says, you know, you got to raise your rates, and here's why. They're the ones with the authority to do just that. That's why we got it. So thank you for asking. That's who the remark is. That's right, Carlos. You've got about a month. That's the answer. You got about a month left, and then they're taking away the old search. All right, here we go. Question two What is the most appropriate carrier pay to ship a 2017 Ford F 150 from Lineville, Iowa to Milford, Utah? See, and this is a question that many will be able to give an educated guess at, an auto, an auto remarketer may have no idea. And they're the ones writing the checks. So we got to get to them. We got to get to them. Uh, most appropriate carrier pay, let's see, Iowa to Utah, F-150. See, somebody's going to say, 790, gosh, that sounds like a lot. As a carrier, you tell them what it costs, right? Yeah, these these everybody will always be off on these. Have different numbers. Everybody's gonna have different numbers all the time. Uh, Sixteen eighty would move it super quick. Now that's a great point. 
So glad you said that. Man, nailing it tonight because that's what we're talking about is not only appropriate to get it moved, but how fast do you want to move it? And you got it. The answer is 1680. That is that's that is probably the right because I don't know where Milford is, I don't know where Lineville is, but I do know that uh, there's not going to be a ton of vehicles on the load board to go with it. So there you go. But good guesses, awesome, I love it. Here we go. Who's ready for question three? Here we go. As we move into Q4 2022. Auto repossession rates are declining, on the rise, no change, or irrelevant. <laughs> declining, on the rise, not changing, or irrelevant. Hey, what's up, John Larrick? How you doing? Hey, oh, Devin's here. Pull Up King Fitness is here. That's awesome. Logistically speaking, K Pasa. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody. I, I mean... Literally everybody is welcome here, and the word seems to be out. So thank you. That's awesome. All right, as we move into Q4 2022, auto repossession rates are declining, on the rise, no change, or who cares? <laughs> oh, all right, we got one for on the rise. John Robertson and Ship Your Car Now is here. We got two for on the rise. Prize are up, by the way. Do I hear three? Can I get a three? <laughs> On the rise. Hold the mayo. Because the repo rates are on the rise. All right, here we go. All right, cool. Here we go. Question four. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2019 Honda Pilot from Coquille, Oregon to Boston, Mass. Is it 740, 1210, 1780, or 2105? Oregon to Boston. Honda Pilot. All right. I mean, I, I have never found Oregon to be the simplest place to grab a bunch. Maybe there's a terminal. I don't know. What is it? Should should it be twenty one oh five? But you know there's a nine car somewhere like, yeah, I got room for a pilot. Yeah, this will be interesting. This will be interesting. I could see either rate being the most appropriate. John Larrick's got seventeen eighty. Interesting. But I like the way you're thinking, Robertson. Cause the shipper, you know. The shipper should pay. Make the shipper pay. Make the shipper pay, huh? Get forks and knives. Make the shipper. All right. Let's see what we got here. 1780. Going rank. Make the shipper pay. All right. <laughs> if any auto marketers were watching, it's going to be one of those deals. All right, here we go. Question five. Digital Dealer Conference is a networking and business show for AI robot technicians in the matrix, crypto financial lenders, high pressure car salesmen, or automotive businesses focused on long term growth. Digital Dealer Conference. It's next week. Who's going to be there? AI robot technicians in the matrix. Crypto financial lenders, high pressure car salesmen, or automotive businesses focused on long term growth. Who's this show for? Anybody? Why go to Digital Dealer? Why not, uh, you know, go hunt a crocodile or whatever? Now, <laughs> what I'm saying is. I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna take. Otherwise, I'm taking it too far. Jay, you took it too far. Automotive businesses, yada yada. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Bully Pulpit. Uh, our answer is 
Automotive businesses focused on long-term growth. Yes. Thank you very much. Awesome. I uh, really do appreciate it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back after this, Industry News Part 2. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss it. Be right back. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Everybody wants to be part of a bigger story. Auto transport is a vital part of that story. Vehicle reconditioning starts when your transport arrives at the dealership. The story starts with you. For our auto retail customers, as yours, full satisfaction. Car dealers can see the rapid recon difference with transparent communication through the vehicle reconditioning process, auto remarketing, and dealer inventory management. Visit rapidrecon.com. Links in the live chat. So I, I was able to pull this out. It, it, it was hard to do. First of all, I'm going to say thank you. Logistically speaking, oh my God. I knocked the top off this thing. Uh, let's see. Here we go. I actually, okay. So I took, I took to Google Translate. Anybody want to guess? Well, I'll just post it. Uh, I support ATI because ATI has always supported my journey. Thank you so very much. Oh, that's awesome. Really do appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, and what we're proud of is that at ATI, we really, we have, I mean, we're in our sixth year and essentially our message is pretty much the same. It's always been, it's just that our audience has grown. Our scope of understanding has grown, but we have always been pro carrier and, uh, everybody should be pro carrier. If you, if you're in automotive, you should be pro carrier. I think you want your inventory, right? You'd think. Ah, well, who knows? Um, all right, here we go. Industry news part two. How auto transport is adapting to supply chain challenges. I found this in auto rental news. This is interesting. How are auto transporters working with fleets to adjust their transportation processes amid the ongoing supply chain challenges? Oh, again, national news on this stuff. So Terry Ross, VP of sales at PARS, shares insights into the changes. Ross says that fleets are placing more of their vehicle inventory in storage. Isn't that interesting? Because Joel was just talking about storage and the price of storage and the availability of storage and how lots are crammed. Companies are extending the life of a vehicle while they wait for new vehicles to arrive at dealerships. Another new development is that fleets are requesting vehicle transfers requiring longer distances than prior to the onset of COVID. Longer distance transportation of vehicles can also be attributed to companies allowing their employees to work remotely. And these are some of the factors. I mean, I think there's a lot more to it, and that's why we have industry news. But this is some good stuff. While it's easier to secure a rental car today than a year ago, car rental companies still remain very reluctant in providing one-way car rentals. As with the challenge of issuing a one-way rental, rideshare has become aggravating as to not having enough drivers, which is pervasive, it seems, in every industry. The auto transport industry has had to deal with the challenge of driver shortages, an area we continue to struggle with. Fewer truck drivers with experience and understanding of the fleet environment. Good points all. And uh, just to put throw it in there, transporting EVs requires a different approach. Rather than going from one location to another because of easy availability of fuel stations, trips would need to be mapped out based on charging stations. Now that... Should be a short-term problem, but is an interesting point. Used car sales likely down 11% this month. Okay, that's quite a bit for a month. 
Um, checking in with CarMax. CarMax made a lot of headlines recently. Revenues rise as used sales dip. Interesting. Total retail, uh, total retail used units sold decreased 6%, while used unit sales were down 8 Gross profit per retail unit was 2.2 thousand, an increase of 100 bucks per unit, despite steep market depreciation. Total wholesale units decreased 15%, with gross profit per unit 881, which is a decrease of 124. Both volume and margins were impacted by retail selectivity and steep market depreciation. CarMax Auto Finance. Talk about an auto remarketer. Now you're getting close. Reported income of $182 million, an 8.6 year-over-year decline as a $40 million swing in the provision for loan losses, primarily reflecting a significant tailwind in the prior year. Those, those, when you see finance, I'm telling you, this is the really interesting part. When you see the word finance in the company name, read on. Learn more. I know it's it's it seems counterproductive, but I'm telling you, those are the one they have the cars, they have the notes, they have the loans, they pay the bills. US light vehicle sales expected to stagnate with pent up demand quickly disappearing. Interesting. Cox Automotive lowered its sales forecast for the third time this year as rising interest rates now threaten to stall demand for new vehicles. We saw this last week. Tesla output forecast shows jump, but then the all the headlines this week were that Tesla underwhelms Wall Street. We'll stop there. Fed, Fed rate heights denting demand for autos. Jonathan Smoke again on the scene. Jonathan talks about the Fed raised the target for the federal funds rate by three quarters of a percentage point on September 21st, making another aggressive move to induce pain in the economy as the cost of reducing inflation. The biggest news was not the increase, but the plans for where rates go from here. We've seen auto loan rates move this summer. To be consistent with the Fed moves through July and housing, mortgage rates moved even more. And on Friday's show, just past Friday on Cars of the Move, Paul Machine was talking about this very thing. The Fed wants to see less credit flowing as a key part of their plan to induce pain, and they're getting what they want. The problem may soon be they're not taking time to see the impact of their moves before doubling down. Housing and auto account for more than 20% of the U.S. economy. These are the most credit-dependent parts of the consumer-driven economy. With the moves already made, we're in for a period of adjustment. And for those with less than perfect credit, financing big ticket purchases is becoming impossible. Bringing us back to the lenders that pay the carrier bills. So, uh, on the Ford thing, and the OEM, and the agency model, here's a dealer that's all in on the new order process. Gowden Ford, moving towards customer orders for its vehicles, and setting up its own retail ordering process. Uh, in summer 2021, Ford Motor Co. on a quarterly earnings call, planned to shift all of its models to an order bank system, the agency model, to reduce complexity and incentive costs that come with building too many vehicles. Ford already attests such a system with the Mach-E. So Gowden Ford in Las Vegas jumped into action, setting up its own retail ordering strategy, installing new tech, revamping pay plans to compensate employees for ordering vehicles that potentially would not be delivered for months. Since July 2020, when Ford unveiled the new Bronco, Gowden Ford has taken 1,500 orders. As of last week, nearly half have been delivered the dealership sold 2,000 plus new vehicles and 1,400 used in 2020. Since July 2020, they've taken 1,500 orders and half have been delivered. Who's... What? Uh, we did the deal Digital Dealer Energy show, and uh, and we mean it. We're focused on Digital Dealer. We're going to be, Ty's going to be on the exhibitor floor, bouncing around among the booths. 
Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. Get the podcast when you see this. Click it. Grab the podcast. It's ATI Auto Business. That's who we are. And if you need, again, you're a shipper, dealer, broker, carrier, and you need something, want to build your business, call Ty, 417-483-2764. He's in the live chat now. He wants to talk to you. We go live several times a week because there's just too much to talk about, too much to cover. Uh, Join us tomorrow. If you're a carrier and you're looking for, like, solid trucking FMCSA, DOT, equipment, insurance, business advice. Live Care Advice is the show for you. Wednesdays at noon with Brian Riker. We'll be back tomorrow. We're doing it pretty much every other week right now. Uh, and I'll say this too. We had a show where we did... Uh, we've done a few sh- like shows about um, the clearinghouse and drugs. We get a lot of questions offline about that stuff. So if you got one of those questions, hit us up. Thermonuclear Thursdays, dispatching live on Thursdays. That's a 90-minute show. That's that's just a good time uh, where we, we, we air out some of the red loads. And on Cars on the Move on Fridays, we connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. So we recently had December and September with uh, Jason Rice of Lot Pop. This past Friday, we, we talked about catching falling knives with Tim Scatalus at Max Digital. Uh, which, I mean, the thing is, that that's a gnarly analogy, but that's what it's like right now trying to figure out if you're a dealer and you have used inventory, when exactly do you want to sell it? Probably as soon as possible. Um, that's why it's like catching a falling knife. If you're a carrier, you want to know this stuff. And Friday, this coming Friday, on the heels of Digital Dealer, Michelle is back from Ship Your Car Now... She is back with another presentation on Cars on the Move. And we're going to be talking, we're going to give kind of a teaser preview of what she's going to be talking about Digital Dealer. She's also going to be at Used Car Week in November, which we'll be talking about in the future coming days. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. My name is Jay. And we're so glad you're here with us tonight. Just a few minutes late for our segment with Ty to introduce John Larrick. Uh, I've done most of the talking I need to do for the week, so let's do this. Let's bring in Ty right after this. Stick around. We get live with Ty, and he's gonna he's gonna set the record straight. We'll be right back. Whoops. And why is auto shipping such a challenge? If shipping cars is part of your job, you've wasted time assigning and tracking shipments, waited around while deadlines are missed and struggled getting anyone to answer your questions. And if you're a carrier moving cars, you've wasted time with bad contact info and shipments that aren't available, waited around for help locating vehicles and receiving payments, and struggled getting anyone to answer your questions. At PAL, we integrate systems for seamless API automations, provide daily email updates, custom portals and reporting, provide ACH quick pays, And we never hide from any questions. Join the auto logistics revolution because it's time to do things better. Pre-owned auto logistics. Vehicle transportation made safe, reliable, and easy. Pre-owned auto logistics provides car shippers with experienced professional drivers, a fully insured modern fleet, and friendly, knowledgeable service. Learn more at preownedautologistics.com. Links in the live chat. Here we go. It is time. Camera one. Oh, we're already on camera one? Excellent. That'll save some time. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. He'll reconnect in a second. Let's jump into the... Uh, you know, I saw in the live chat... Um, good question, logistically. I don't think Ron is here tonight. Um... Scheduling is always a challenge, so hopefully Ron is with us in the live chat at some point, but I haven't seen him, so, but I appreciate the question. And, and logistically speaking, so, uh, feel free to, you know, if you want to share information about your company or what you're up to, that'd be great. Um, where you're at on this journey. It is a journey. That's part of it too, is that 
what, 80 plus percent of the carrier base is owner operators. That is a, that's a tough journey. And people assume when they post it on Central that, you know, it's just, it's all robotic and no problem. Not even close. It's the opposite, actually. I mean, you're messing with people's livelihoods. Let's get Ty up in here. So thank you so much. Oh, you know what? That's crazy, Candy, because I'm like, God, that sounds like Candy. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. All right, Ty. Oh, wait, here we go. The one, the only, standing room only, general admission, your friend and mine, Ty Thompson. Hey, Jake. Hey, what's going I on? I can man? see you and hear you. you Isn't that crazy? And we didn't even have to say it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we're like, we're kind of getting into a rhythm here. Yeah, it is good. Um, yeah, good. Happy to be here. Looking forward Thanks. to tonight's show. Yeah. So here's what I got to talk about real quick, okay? <clears throat> um, because of this channel and because we always throw out my phone number on this channel, 417-483-2764, just give Ty a call if you're trying to figure it out. So if, if I'm going to gauge where we're at, with the carriers, okay, based on phone calls I get, and probably you could also be a good judge of this too, the emails you get. So I get phone calls, maybe you get emails. So traditionally what happens, say pre-COVID, one to two phone calls a day. Hey, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, uh, let's go to say this year, 2022. <clears throat> the volume of people that call to learn or talk about car hauling has dropped so dramatically that there's maybe two coming in a week okay that that tells me something that people are either not interested or already have it figured out and don't need help whatever you want to say they all of a sudden they figured it out in 2022 which is probably not true so where i'm going with this i'm just telling you Jay, my friend, or anybody else who's wanting to listen. My concern today is for the remarketers. Okay, the remarketers, as Jay pointed out earlier, those are the people that have the money, right? They're the finance company, the Bank of America, the U.S. Bank, the Credit Acceptance Corporation, Element, Bridgecrest, big companies that have a lot of money and that fund vehicle purchases. Got it? Does that make sense? Okay. So those people hand out money for ridiculous amounts of time, by the way, 84 months for a, what, a $15,000, $20,000 car. What, what happened? Either way, it doesn't matter. Not my, not my problem. But so with the economy, we had Paul on. He's talking about mortgage rates. That doesn't have anything to do with car hauling. Talking about interest rates. That doesn't have anything to do with car hauling. Now Ty's talking about lender guys, and that doesn't have anything. I just want to haul cars, Ty. Well, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Am I okay? Oh, you're great, man. I'm loving it. Okay. So what the, we just had the most amazing meeting with a repo gang yesterday, I think it was. And what what's, so here's how it traditionally works. I want to buy a car. I go to the dealership. I get financed by a lending institution. I've just got to make my payments. The economy is kind of rough. I'm not able to make my payments. Inflation, the price of eggs and milk is, keeps going up. Gas keeps going up. I'm having a really hard time deciding to make my car payment, my rent payment, or put food on the table. That's real. It's, unfortunately, that's where we're at today. So I decided to go ahead and give my car back. Or the repo guy comes and gets it. So the repo guy holds it. Here's a whole new problem, right, that we don't even know about. <laughs> like these repo people have a real problem to the point where they're talking stuff like maybe we don't want to do repos anymore because you guys aren't easy to work with. So it comes to the transport guy, the lender people make a deal with the repo people, the dealer people, and the auction people. The auction people make a deal with the lender people. As soon as the car is ready to go, We'll send the transport guy. We'll pick it up, whatever we got to do. We'll bring it back to our auction and we'll, we have a package. You can take the package if you want the package. The package is, is we'll detail it, we'll shine it, and we'll run it through the sale and we'll sell it. And for all that service, it costs you this much. So the lender consigner remarketer guy says, yeah, that's great. Just hurry up and sell my car because I need my money, right? So there's always this push. Anytime you get the phone call, where are you? What are you doing? That's the push. 
the sooner you understand that money's pushing that phone call, the happier your life will be. All right. If you want to be a car hog. Am I making sense, Jay? Well, you, yeah. And I was just, I, because I went to a visual. What you've, what we're seeing is, so you've got folks that work at the auction and consigners, auto remarketers, banks, etc. And they're, they've wrapped saran wrap around themselves. Yeah. And then when they need to, to deal with carriers, they cut a little slot and just kind of pass notes through the slot. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. It's well, and, but, well, it's not. Now, in, in times past, my, my transport days, when I've got 20 trucks, 20 drivers, owner operators, leased on, carpoolers everywhere, office people everywhere, you build a relationship with the auction and the dealer and, believe it or not, get this, you build a relationship with the repo guy, the guy that always gives you a headache. Right. That's what we used to say. Right. We're putting the repo right. hammer down now. <laughs> and that's what we built Saran Wrap around the repo. So we pass notes back and forth to the repo and we're trying to break through that cellophane. Finally, we're actually yeah, speaking we now. Yeah, it's cool. Well, and I think there is hope, but I think, OK, so my, where we're where, this show, Jay and I have these talks every now and then. And we, I'm like, Jay, I'm really concerned. I by the way, when you call and you say, Ty, I want to. Um, talk about transport there's no charge for that right there's there's no program to sign up for there's no 99.99 a month to get in the club there's, this this platform's here to help the entire ecosystem because i'm telling you it's going to need a lot of help real soon now to clarify i'm just gonna because someone's gonna say but you said now there is a charge if it turns into long term but if you call ty I mean, am I right about that? If oh, you call yeah, Ty, yeah, yeah, yeah. You call yeah. Ty right now. You can chew his ear off for 30 minutes and, you yeah. know, he's whistling Dixie. We'll yeah. be happy happy that we but talk. What we don't do is we don't spend half of our programming trying to move you into cost with just little clickbait messages periodically. <laughs> no. no. Which We're, is funny I mean, because did, I wonder, did YouTube take down all the get rich quick YouTube videos? Or no, I think they, they just ran out. out of people to, to go I think for it. They ran out of clickbait. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, the guys that are out there doing the job I, and that are, we're making videos that aren't making videos, I suspect aren't hauling cars anymore. Now, that's got to be what, right? Exactly. You start watching these videos and find out that what, I don't know what they're doing now. Boy, that instills a lot of confidence. Right. So the, so it's not gloom and doom. It sounds bad. And, and the rates, by the way, they are a big part of this conversation. There's there's the, the in my opinion, and I could be wrong, but I think there's there's a, an awareness factor here that maybe some people aren't aware of. I'm going to hope that's my hope. I'm hoping the remarketers are not aware of the problem. The problem is, is those cars that you need to get sold really, really bad because Mike Buchanan puts out a post and says the price of the used car continues to drop week after week after week. That's the push. They're trying to get the car to the auction so they can sell it while it's the price of the used car is high. So the price of the used car, keep, go ahead. No, you're nailing it right there. And there's the falling knife. <laughs> because they need that thing yeah. moved as soon as possible. Yeah. So yeah, now. That's a good point. Uh, my what my concern is is that the remarketing people that need this thing moved real fast before the price drops another point next week, right? The repo guy's not feeling too good about life right now. The transport guy's not feeling too good about life right now, and the auctions doing their best, right? So my point is is that if and I, and I think you know I always talk about love the dealer. So to me, ultimately, the dealer is the conversation right here. What well, time you're talking about remarketers, but the dealer has to go buy those cars. And see, and here it is, Tyrone. You got it. The rates don't reflect what we just said, and therein lies the problem. That's why we're talking about this. We're not talking about this because we love this. We're talking about, and I don't know any. I don't. I don't think anybody else is saying this. You know, Ty, you were at the IARA. Was that July? Yeah. You were in the committee roundtable, and someone was saying, you know, what's the biggest problem? And, and somebody said, what, robots and chargers? I don't know. What did EVs. they say? Yeah, EVs. EVs. They were so worried about how are we going to move our EVs, and I'm like, 
you don't that's not even a conversation i don't I can't believe we have a room full of people here to talk about evs how about how are you going to get your crap to the auction that what what, what what do you mean well we deal with the we have a youtube channel we've got almost 14,000 subscribers i talk to car haulers every day car haulers come in and car haulers go out the amount of car haulers coming in is not the same as the amount going out. The amount coming in is much lower than the amount going out. Did you hear that? Wait, you mean you're not getting emails about gigawatts and clickawatts and stuff? No, I'm oh. getting emails. How do I get rid of my equipment? I'm done. Or I don't want to get into it. Now, I will say this, positive note. The, the few phone calls that are coming in to people interested in car hauling, here's what's really cool. These are like people that are pretty serious, like, you know me, whenever you call, I always ask two questions. Can you live off of, uh, can you live without a check for a year starting right now? And who's your customer, right? Those, so those people that are calling now, they, they, they know answer number one, yes. Number two, that's why they're calling. I want to and, figure this out. And that's why when Brianna Cox of Asset Resolutions raises in her vertical that there's a big lender see the theme here there's a big lender not paying their bills and agents are going out of business because you just asked two questions how can you live without a paycheck for six months 12 because i changed the, it to 12. the, the lender's sorry. like yeah 6 12 84. <laughs> hey we're the lender yeah now we we're not really having, okay by the way camera one dear lender we're not we're not hosting this show to have fun at anyone's expense. We're trying to raise a serious problem you may not realize. We're trying to help. Oh, that's exactly it. So now if you want to go off tinfoil rabbit hole, uh, so and this is where it gets crazy. So maybe they do know this, right? People with money, greed, greed can do a lot of crazy things. But uh, – what if they do know this and now we just, okay, repo guys here, we'll pay you storage, we'll pay you whatever you want, just bring it to you and we're gonna send in ACV and backlog cars. Okay, did I just say that out loud? Whoa, wait a minute, what? Have you guys been thinking, have you guys been watching, are you paying attention, what, are, what happened to the dealer that Ty used to go pick up 30 cars on Monday, take them to the auction? Where are those cars at now? <laughs> Mr. Blinky Eye, perfect time. John Larrick's like, when do I get to talk? All right, here yeah, we go. Let's go. Camera one. Let's bring in John Larrick. He's a friend of the show. We love having him on the show. He's our featured guest tonight. Please do wish a warm welcome to our friend John Larrick of Larrick's Transport. And keep on bringing it live. Bring in the heat in the live chat. Please keep doing that. Now, John, can you see us and hear us okay? I can see you. Can you hear me? We hear you. We don't see you. But, you know, we can set that a win. Let me figure it out. Hold on. All right, cool. There's a start video button. Uh, the lender will list their cars on Central and have them move cheap. Well, there you go. See, Silver Mint has his finger on them. Exactly. Now, see, and that's it. That's the band you got to put back together. Looking at each other and handing out picket signs ain't going to solve Diddley. Did he just... <laughs> I'm still here. Just trying to get it working. No, on. no, I was just talking to myself. I was having a one-way convo. Uh, let's see. And, and So Candy, Tyrone, Silver Mint. But I think we got a mosh pit going in the live chat, Ty. Oh, you're on courtesy mute, Ty. Oh, and Tommy says, hey, guys, tuning in while I got the signal running storm cars down to West Palm. Well, Tommy's already running storm cars. Good for you, Tommy. Staying mm. busy. I mean, that's what I mean, you know, staying busy. Good job. Got to do what you got. Yep. John's got a Florida story for us. Oh, he does? Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get my picture up there, hold on, man. <laughs> uh, um... <clears throat> and we're and then, also, too, the whole saltwater cars, you guys got to watch out for that. Uh, yeah, you always hear transport that saltwater uh, car stuff. Yeah, you don't want to buy one of those if you can avoid it. 
Yeah. Stay right, away from the fire, fire beware. Car. Yeah. Just well, a heads up. You know what's interesting? I remember, um, I don't remember the name of the hurricane, but in Houston and Louisiana, what, four years ago? And um, just the sheer amount of cars that were getting mm. repoed, moved into lots. I mean, it was a lot of cars. We're going to see a lot of mm. cars. And it's Florida. We're going to yeah. see a lot of, a lot of cars, aren't we? Well, something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're salvaged. They're so, totally, you know, think about the claims down there. Oh, they, I know. That's got to be that's ridiculous. Weird. If Tommy's, well, and that's really interesting, Tommy. I mean, because if you're, if you're running storm cars down on West Palm. Reynolds. I bet Reynolds. Are they Okay, Reynolds? so he, you think he's moving cars that are okay that need to get out of the way? No, right. I think he's bringing transportation in. Oh, might be rental cars. Rental cars. Yeah, but isn't after it the still... water goes away, you got to get around. And it's... two, you know who makes big money on these natural disasters? Enterprise, Avis, Budget, Hertz. They got them just outside the state, and they. Sh- William says they'll get United Road to move them. That's William's input. Uh, any cars being brought out of Okeechobee? Says Tommy. Any cars being brought oh, out see of that Okeechobee. start video? See that start video button there, John? Yeah. Yeah, Especially. click click start video. That 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 little camera with a hashtag through it. Let's go. Come on. But you're on your phone. Uh huh. Interesting. Hey, wait! I thought I just saw him. Did you? Did you see me? I saw Did him. You? Yeah, there's your background right there. Where the hell there's am I? John. Uh, just can't see John. He's blended in with the background. He's like part of the sky. Oh, he's part of the... Interesting. <laughs> there went a flash to John. I saw him. Hold on. Are, are oh, he t- oh, he. <laughs> he's screen sharing, too. Am I? Man. <laughs> so, right, so Watch out. we've got... We, we've made John just hit too many okay. buttons. I'm John. I'm, so I'll tell you, so we do see the background. We see the truck. Yep. Hey, there there's is... John. Hey, what's Ta-da. up, John? Yeah. The new, new no trucker can figure it out. <laughs> That's awesome. Finally. That's no, John <laughs> Lurk. Good to How's see you. How's everybody doing? We're doing good. We're uh, Jay's on one tonight, so we're just gonna go with it. Good, good. Just talking about Florida. Florida's yeah, we were talking about Florida. I, I think I got a hold of you like the day of or the day after. And tell us what happened. You got some really crazy stories. I had two trucks sitting in South Carolina. They couldn't go anywhere. So we were trying to find out when we were allowed to go back into Florida. And they wouldn't let us go into Florida. So then they were sitting in South Carolina. And I said, you guys got to get out of South Carolina because the storm's coming in toward Myrtle. (laughs) So they basically, when it was starting to come into Myrtle, they went down to Florida. And then they finally let them in. But there's nobody down there. People... We're, we're, we're bringing cars back. The cars that are going down, we're starting to bring them back. Wow. So uh, I wonder if that's happening now. Is that the auction dealer world, POV world? It's all it's all POV. It's snowbirds. The snowbirds. So the snowbirds are saying, I don't think I'm going to spend this winter in Florida. Yeah, well, a lot of them call us when we I said it's too late. The truck's already on its way down. So then we said, well, when you get down here, let us know what's going on. We'll leave it on a truck, we'll bring it back. So we have a couple down there that we left. We'll probably end up bringing them back, you know, because their, their houses are just... It's the people that are over in Naples and Fort Myers side where we're having a problem. Yeah, see, I think, Jay, you may know, but I think I checked in with Dave Sutton, uh, Montway. I thought okay. he was over there at uh, Naples. He said it was pretty bad. I don't remember if, if he's there. Where he's but anyway... So this is an interesting conversation with a guy like John, because I don't know how much, and it's none of my business, but if your business is POV, and now's the season to go to Florida, that's kind of your, where, and I'm assuming I've never done it, but if you're East Coast, is this right, John, what I'm saying? POV is a big thing over there in the East Coast, isn't it? Yeah, we have a lot of snowbirds that go down. We do over 800 uh, that go down every season, and then... Um, you know, we bring them back in the spring. But this is strictly snowbirds. This is a whole different part of my business. Yeah, yeah. But that, so that now, now that's a, a new conversation you may have had over the years because you've done it for a long time. But a new guy like me who doesn't know, I would have never thought in 100 years when they get a hurricane in Florida, that's going to mess up a transport guy with a snowbird coming from the north to the south, right? 
it definitely. And now, and now what we're going to see happen too, which we'll be getting phone calls. Now, um, the rental car business and everything is going to take off down here because they need rental cars now. All right. So you're going to get the phone call to start slamming. Yeah. And we're saying, cars. no, we're, we're too busy with the snowbirds right now. So that's going to be another avenue that's going to open up. There's going to be a lot of business going down south just for getting cars down there. Yeah. And the rental, that is, so I was right about that. So Tommy could actually be hauling rentals in there already. The guy in the live chat, Tom, Tommy. Yeah. Okay. So lots of time. We're going to pick up. I'm, I'm going to let you have the show here in just a second about rates and what you see going on. But as far as uh, last time we talked, you were uh, needing a driver too. I think, where, where is that at? Where are we at with the driver situation? I got three drivers. Got uh, they've uh, Within the last three weeks, um, we've, we've put on three drivers. And so far, knock on wood, everything's good. Dude, that's awesome. It's really good, yeah. So, Congratulations. Good one. job. Just just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. was going to ask. So here's one up before we move on. All right. So what happens when you're what's on the backhaul going north? What's that look like? We we pick up uh, OEM stuff out of Jacksonville, bring it up into the Carolinas. And then we do stuff out of Greer. Fantastic, right? That's great. Out of Greer that comes back to New York area. Oh, great. OK, good. Yeah. So uh, very, very seldom the trucks aren't loaded. Um, you know, years ago when I first started the snowbird business, though, I would run down there, deliver my cars, and dead head back home. You know, because we just had to get right. back for another load. It's because of your experience and time in the industry. That's how you put together that OEM backhaul. I'm sure that wasn't easy to right. Oh yeah, and it's basic. Yeah. It's it's from, you know, getting a good reputation and our guys doing what they have to do. Hmm. Which brings us back to good drivers. Good, oh, right. drivers can either make or break you. You know that. Everybody knows that. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> everybody except the... Uh -oh. <laughs> Remarketer. Oh, oh, take it easy, Jay. Jay. We were good. Come we were on, Jay. On. We are doing so good. <laughs> well, you're really on them tonight, aren't you? Well, you Ooh. know, here's, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> that was not the plan. We're supposed to be talking about carriers. Let's do that. Let's just okay. let's just skip right through that nastiness. Carriers. Okay. <laughs> carriers. Well, I also find I'll say this is that see, you know what happens is that we get t I think we get I think Ty and I secretly get a little fed up with everything is press releases and this is great and everything's wonderful. And, you know, there's the guy in the back jumping up and down like, I got a problem, you know, and we represent that guy. So we feel it our duty to shine a spotlight on the trash in the alley. Somebody has to. You have to. And, you know, we see it. I see it a lot. I see it at the auctions and stuff where they don't care about us. You know, they just don't. The auction doesn't. I mean, they don't even give us parking half the time. And, hmm. you know, they give you a hard time when you have pullers in the yard. It's just, it just, believe me, it's, it's, a, they don't treat us the way that they should. And I don't know why, because we're bringing the cars in without the cars, they don't have an auction. So it, it's just, it's one of these things that we've dealt with for years, you know, it's just, they don't care. All right. And that's, it, there we go. And like Ty was live. No wonder you get kicked out of the auction. Ty's live at the auction. And we're watching a guy throughout, for just a 30-minute show, he walked the whole way and back just to get his uh, jump pack. <laughs> he never even picked up a car during our whole 30-minute show. Why do you have to park two miles away from where you're picking up the car? Yeah, it's, it happens. And there's it no happens shuttle. Probably. Yeah. Don't or somebody will, jump, somebody will jump in a car, use that car to go find their car, and it's not where it's supposed to be. My guy's out there for three hours trying to find one car, and it's somewhere where it should have never been. But nobody will help you, and nobody knows where it's at. So you just got to walk the whole lot and find it. Hopefully you'll find it. There's times they leave. They just can't find it. Well, and it, it's, you know what it is? It's that shopping cart that you find two miles away in a park, flipped over. Now you know how it got there. Yeah. Somebody, somebody you, bought it and left it. fed up. I'm taking the shopping cart. And I'm dumping right. it. Well, that's why technology like Cognosis and stuff cuts down on that problem. Or Mannheim Blot Vision. But, 
But it's it going back to the symptom, right? Doctor, what's the symptom? That's how you're going to identify the problem. But who do you talk to? Who's going to help you fix it? Well, I know that's why we're jumping up and down on a YouTube channel. Tom. Right. <laughs> uh, two, two things real quick. Joe Bukari said if you need him, you can shoot him an a invite. He's scheduled change, so he's available. You can bring Joe in. Um, number two. Great. <clears throat> this, see, John, what you see, I've, I've always said this. The, the auction doesn't care. So I made it my job to care for the auction, right? I'm, I'm with you. Come on. Why are you giving me a hard time? I'm bringing the cars in and I'm taking them out. Uh, I'm going to hold on. I'm, keep going, Jay. Take over. Yeah, no. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, I mean, so, John, we're going to pass you the baton there. Keep going because you. That's, thank you. You're saying so, what so many guys think. No, it, it happens. Believe me, it happens all the time. You know, it's just the auctions, you know, they just – now they've changed their hours, so things are really – bad because you know guys can't get in after hours to get their cars um nobody ever answers the phone at the guard house so you can't get a hold of anybody to find out if your gate you know passes are there or anything so it's we do a lot of auction work so we deal with it but thank god a lot of the stuff that we do goes to recon shops so we get to drop it at the recon we don't have to deal with the deal you know the auction itself but when we have to pull a car out of the auction you got you want to talk about drivers being upset? Oh my God, they just they don't like you that all. Well, they just it, uh, they was, complain. You, it's on Facebook every day, isn't it? Yeah, but it seems to stay confined to Facebook. Right. Then that <laughs> way nobody has to really worry about it. But it's true when you can get in hold with a guard shack and you can actually get somebody's name. You're it's it, it's like you're a hostage. You're like okay, please. Please help me get this car and get out of here. You know, I mean, you, it's crazy. It's an auto marketer would not believe it. Well, the whole thing is like when Ty goes, when you go to the auction, Ty, you know your way around. So it's yeah. a lot here on you. There's a lot of times, like I said, you know, when I was in the truck, I would go, I, I could walk right into the guardhouse and grab my paperwork and walk out because I knew what to do. But try to explain that to a driver. It's going to take them a little while to get used to that. And then if the auction is not working with them, it's not going to happen. Right. So the, the key, and this is, this is why I'm like, okay, you guys want to talk about where do we send people that want to be car haulers? You always ask me and I always say, send them to Auction Academy. That's where we'll start. Because if, you know, okay, live chat, raise your hand. Who's been to an auction? It's only Tuesday. Who's been to an auction this week? Live chat. Probably 90% of the live chat has been to an auction this week. And, and I think to me, that's where the educate see, to, to keep the driver happy, and, and John just touched on this, you know. I mean, I'm, I love truck drivers, but they're the kind of people that may not always have that much patience for stupid, right? Well, you go to an auction, you're going to encounter all kinds of stupid. And that's hard on the guy who owns the truck who's trying to keep the driver happy, who's getting paid on commission only. He's not getting paid to stand around and look for cars right john no when you start you know, that's where the hourly you know if you paid them for the hour you'd go broke <laughs> you know as an right. owner you know but a lot of times we have to compensate them for their time i mean i just have to say to them look i know you spent a lot of time but i'd rather you not come back without the vehicle you know so because then we just got to go pick it up again or we end up with one of my dealers yeah with us because we didn't bring the car back so right yeah and then you're now you're negotiating with your driver to keep him right. happy to keep him coming back to work tomorrow and and again this see so here's here's the thing i've always told everybody and, and i could be really wrong and i'm like i don't think that the dealer or the auction really gives two craps about how hard my job is they just want the job done so I've always spent the last 20 years trying to navigate and create these other opportunities. So the whole car hauler, car puller thing, I mean, that's actually a real business now. Did you know that? Oh, right. And I, and I just read something the other day. I mean, we're paying on an average of $10 a car. But I yeah. Just saw, I saw something the other day where they're saying the car pullers are getting $15. A car now, I'm saying. Which is the amount. The go up? That's, that's what I want to know. That's the amount a, an owner-operator is getting after negotiating for 30 minutes with a broker. Right. It basically pays the car puller. That ain't no money. 
Uh, what are we doing here? And like I said, it comes off the top. We don't charge it. We don't charge our drivers for that. We take, you know, we say to ourselves. That's another fixed expense for the carrier guy who's already dealing with the fuel increase, who's already dealing with the insurance increase, who's already dealing with the driver shortage, who's already dealing with all these problems. Now I'm going to pay somebody ten, fifteen dollars just so I can keep my driver happy and I don't have to deal with you and your train wreck. Okay, and so now, as an auto remarketer or lender, I could say, well, if you could do your job right, you wouldn't need a car puller. Well, here's the problem. Now that auction security, guard shack, etc., has become more about secure lots and keeping down theft rather than customer service, we got to get the car puller to stay on time and keep up with this breakneck pace. No. Well, the, the guy at the, the guard, the guy at the guard shack doesn't care where your car is. I mean, if you're lucky to find <laughs> find a, somebody that's driving around in the yard, he might be able to help you out. But those guards, right. <laughs> forget it. They're not leaving that little house there. <laughs> no, the guard shack guys aren't. They, oh my God! They pass that's me. it. Yes. I'm not leaving my little house. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Um, all right, so, all right, Ola's not here yet. Let's see, Tyrone and Lloyd are up next. Uh, oh, Lloyd might be a little late. Uh, Joe said he was available. I think so. Lloyd's here. I'll tell you what, since we're, John, go with your next thought while I invite uh, Joe. I, I, I don't know if you want me to talk about snowbirds anymore, but like I said, from us doing it for so long, we, we don't even... Uh, deliver them door to door anymore. We have terminals in Florida that we use. So that's another thing that's helped my drivers out a lot so they can make a lot more time. They used to spend a whole day just delivering cars down there. And now the way Florida is nowadays, you can't go on A1A with a car carrier at all. They don't, they don't want them. They forbid them from being out there. So you had to use terminals to, you know, drop them. But our guys go in, they drop them. They get back on the road and head north, you know, and get their stuff. But coming out of Florida, though, a lot of times we either got to we got to load out of Tampa or we got to go right up to Jacksonville. So you got deadhead mileage from you know Fort Lauderdale up to Jacksonville, and there's no way around it. Mm. Yeah, but that's a lot better than deadhead back to where Pennsylvania, New and, York. Where and yet at? he pointed out something important: you still feel that deadhead, don't you? Oh yeah. We got to, because now, now, now you got to put that deadhead mileage on the rest of your trip to see what, you know, your cost per mile is, and and you yeah. might find, out, wow, this is killing me because, but you got to get out of Florida, so there's no way around it. But see, one of the things that I like about John that I think is true. Now, I, John, I haven't, John and I haven't talked about this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out and guess, alive, really good idea, Ty. <laughs> no. Uh, Part of, I would assume, your ability to still be in business, be successful in business is, I'm guessing you have a lot of relationships. Is that yeah. right? Yes, a lot. A lot. Like, when you say I, I move about 800 or 1,000 POVs, when I hear you say that, I hear a relationship. Well, this is it, is it is, Ty, but that's, that's from word of mouth. We yeah. don't do any advertising. You look on my website, I don't really don't do anything for snowbirds. Our snowbirds are our customers themselves being so satisfied with us that they they um, they tell their other, their other friends and stuff. And that's how we get, it's just every year, we pick up more and more customers. Lately, we've been actually giving them to some of our competitors because it's just too much, you know, and I don't want to stretch out too far. I want to stay in the New Jersey, you know, New York area. So all of our Connecticut's I give to my friends up there. Um, anything that's down in Maryland, I give to my friends down there. You know, these are all the people that I've met in the auto transport business that we know and we do business with. Um, yeah. But, so it's worked out really well, but it's no advertising at all. It's all word of mouth. Right, but, um, but I think it's true for the other part of your business, whether that's dealer, auction, OEM, I'm guessing, even going back to when you started it, it started with relationships. Today, it's still relationships. The technology that you use is nothing more than just to satisfy the paperwork, the checks, check the box, right? It's still, I know John Larrick, John knows so-and-so, and this, let's do business. 
Is that, am I right? Yes, yes. And that's, you know, when I started my business doing the snowbirds, I did it myself. Yeah. I yeah. was in the truck. I did yeah. more to tour. I didn't even use terminals. And then mm -hmm. it got to the point where we put another truck on and another truck. And then it got to the point where, you know, we weren't doing door to door anymore. But I'll tell you, when I first started, it was door to door. I, mm. you know, we we would pick them up in Jersey because we've always had the business there. So we could terminalize them. My flatbeds go out, pick them up. We load the truck out of the yard, and we go down. We do the same thing when they come home. We bring it to the yard, unload, and we, we deliver everything. But when I went to Florida, I spent some day, some day, day and a half delivering the carts. I would go out, get into the turn slots, take the car off, drive it in. Have the, the customer drive me back to my truck. They all did it. They didn't give us a hard time. And the relationship that I got with my customers right now, they let us drive their cars. It, it's amazing that they trust us that much that they let yeah. us drive their cars. But we've been doing it for so long for them. They know there's no problems. And if there is a problem, we're going to take care of it right away anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. So as so the POV business maybe got a little bit of changes going on. The dealer auction world, are you seeing any kind of I mean, I know you, I know that you're expecting Auc or... auction stuff is down, 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 down. down. Okay. It's, it, I don't know. I, I don't know how the auctions are making it because they're empty. There's nothing going on. Um, we don't see it at all. We don't see a lot going to. I got a couple of customers that that do do auction stuff, but it's not like it used to be. Yeah. OEM. I just want to ask yeah. this between inventory changes and digital auctions and or other i mean what what do you think the reason is there for the auctions down what do you you know i don't think the vehicles are there jay i i, I think what's happening is they're not the rental car companies and everything you, you see the age of those cars that they got it's just not they don't have the Hanging inventory they're not yeah. getting rid of their cars so and the dealers I, aren't sending them back to the auction either they're selling them Oh, they grab them right away. They don't. They don't want to give them up. I mean, we lease returns were our, our really big business for us. The dealers aren't even letting them go. They're buying them right away. They're not. They're not going to the auction. So, and that's mm. one thing we do. And if we do, it's it's wrecked anyway. It's not good shape. So. Mm, okay. Uh, good stuff. Here. Here's. Oh, go ahead, John. I don't know if anybody else has said that to you, but that's that's a problem. I well. Mean, we, we don't see it. I don't see it happening in a way. We're, you know. we're, we're glad you're saying it because that's, yeah, we want to hear it. Well, but see what, what John just said is what Paul Machine says, Mike Buchanan says, and then we hang out with our auction people and they say the same thing too. The auction people are saying, yeah, or we, you know, we, we were hitting, I mean, golly, remember it wasn't a year ago. If we were hearing stupid, I'd never heard 75% sale. Have you ever heard that, John? No, not at all. No. I mean, think about what's going to happen. It's going to trickle down. I mean, look at all the recon shops that are going to have to close down and stuff. They got no work. These guys put a lot of money into building a recon, and now they got no cars. So I mean, Right inside the auction, right? Well, that would be it's tough. Gonna, it's going to hurt a lot of people if it right. keeps going this way. Mm. Wow, um, that's tough. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Whoa. Uh, all right, camera one, what we're going to do right now is we're going to bring in Joe and Ola. Joe Burkari and Ola, dealer, inventory, etc. Both joining now. It's a free-for-all. You're live on Tuesday night on ATI Auto Business. Hey, um, Jay, before, yeah. what would, I'm, oh, I want to set this up. I got a question for Joe. Joe will know the answer to this because I remember my phone call I told you I got from the GM Buick guy last week. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joe. Hi. I had a GM Buick guy in Nowhere, Kansas, call me last week and say, hey, uh, GM Buick said I can go to Kansas City and get my own new cars now. Have you heard that? Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ola. Uh, my, so I have a dealer in Kansas, small town Kansas, mm -hmm. GM Buick. Mm -hmm. He says, hey, Ty, can you go get my new Buick GMs off the railhead in Kansas City and bring them to me? I said, they'll let me do that? He said, well, they just told me that I can, I'm in charge of it now. I can go get them myself. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think that passes my sniff test, Ty. Now, uh, they may be – now, there have been uh, some interruptions in the supply chain at some locations because of uh, driver shortages. And so yeah. uh, there have been instances where drivers where, – where dealers are allowed to do what they call dealer pickups, and they'll come and collect individual units as long as they're within a certain distance, that kind of thing. Yeah. So might be talking about something like that, but – Something like that, yeah. Management yeah. Of, of OEM uh, volume – that's typically very, very tightly held by the manufacturer. I, I would be very surprised if they were going to hand that to the dealerships. Mm. Well, I want, I'm glad that you showed up tonight, and I want to introduce you to my friend Ola. Ola, Ola. this is Joe. Hi. Joe, yes, this sir. is Ola. Hey, Ola. How you doing? How are you? Ola, is, uh, tell them what you do, Ola. I'm a sales consultant. Search consultant? Is that what sales you said? Sales consultant. Oh, sales consultant. Yeah, it is, it is Chevy it dealership, bank. He's, right? He's moving slow. He's seen this show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll see you now. It's okay. Sorry about that. No, you're good. All right, keep going, Ola. What's, ha- what's new? What's happening? So I think I've heard a couple of people uh, say something about the way inventory is now. And uh, the gentleman ju- that just spoke, I think his name is Joe, Um auctions are pretty much not the it's it's not the way right now we're buying more vehicles from um individuals we're actually going into service and you know catching them young if if i can use that term you know offering to buy people's vehicle off certain people that have a fleet of car three or four vehicles in your yard insurance is high everything is expensive you know give them payoff as much as they, as much as we can, as much as they want to get vehicles in. So we, for the past two years, I think this is the first, this, this Q4 is showing that we have the most inventory in, in used cars. I'm saying for the past two years, this is the first time we've had the largest inventory. So uh, that's, that's the newest thing right now. And that's and you're getting that from, from uh, yourself from auctions and and those kinds of sources as opposed to what was the way it was done before. Uh, normally, it, it was from the auctions, mm-hmm. uh, but now we're not getting a lot of cars from the auctions. As a matter of fact, I remember we, was a gentleman that was hired to buy vehicles from the auction about six months ago. I think he got fired. Because a few vehicles that he bought, <laughs> some of them we still have sitting there. They were damaged, a whole lot of damage on them. So we've just resulted in um, just giving payoffs and um, try to put people in new cars if we can. If not, we just want to buy a car. You know, we, we started sending offers to people at home uh, just to, you know, incentivize them from driving down to the dealership we're picking cars from people's yards i've you know i physically picked up two trucks myself from people's houses and <laughs> mailed them a check well i can say this uh and and i think john larrick good to see you john by the way again hey, hey man john made a comment earlier about how auction business is way way off uh, from from his vantage point, and I can say we do a lot of business with uh, CarMax, and their volumes are also very 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 often. And, and recently too, like January February, the amount of available loads that we that we have seen, I mean, it, we're still keeping a relatively steady flow, but the amount of overflow loads used to be, you know, we'd be turning down traffic from them, and uh, lately. You almost can't turn down a load uh, from them because uh, their volumes have, have also seemed to really take a dive. Yeah, um, you, I agree um, to what you just said. Uh, like I said, um, inventory is looking a little bit better. I, I'd say the best for the past two years, again. Uh, used vehicles... We've not had used vehicles as much as we have right now in the past two years. 
And that's because our auction is not, for some reason, the boss is just not me going to the auction. You know, we've relied on trade-ins, uh, relied on customers who can't make their payments, uh, relied on people who have two or three vehicles and they want to get rid of two or one, however the case may be. And um, we've been getting vehicles that way. And um, believe it or not, it seems like as soon as they get there on the lot, they've gone almost at the same speed, if not even faster. Oh, yeah. New, new vehicles have been like that. You, you, you can scarcely get them off the carrier. There, there will be a fleet of salespeople will, sto- will show up at a car carrier, especially if it's two or three particular products that are really hot. <laughs> And they'll be, they'll be just, you know, is that one ours? I think I sold one that color. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually, uh, yeah, I actually have, um, I've been expecting this Traverse now for about a month. And um, also I've been waiting on um, uh, a Corvette. That one I just got a build date for last week, uh, Thursday. So I, I'm not looking out for the Corvette because I know that's months out. But as far as um, the Traverse, I, I would check every truck that pulls up. Hey, how many is ours? And the driver goes, hey, look, you guys just have one on this truck. And I'm looking at about nine, nine cars, vehicles up on that truck. So, and, and it's not just me. Every, every, you know, every sales consultant is uh, excited to go out there once they hear a truck or see a truck pulling up to go see because um it's a new norm now for us to sell vehicles in transit so you know and, and if your truck don't get delivered you don't get paid <laughs> so so the moment your car drops you want to hit your customer up um get them in there sign them up and uh sooner they sign up so you can get paid i i tell you a funny story uh Ola, I, it's, I i gather you're a part of a general motors uh dealer I don't know if you have any other name badges. So I'm going to use a name badge that is absolutely, you know, that is not a General Motors name badge just for the sake of of the discussion. Um, But we've had dealerships that normally would say, you know, delivery hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., no no dropping after hours, no Saturday inspections, things like that. Uh, if, If we call a dealership and say, but I've got a Maverick for you, Oh yeah, yeah, come on, come on! It'll be yeah. It'll be, you know, they're, they're standing there with the with the, with the washcloth and the and, and, and the and whatever the new car smell is inside of that spray bottle that you guys have. They're waiting for you. So uh, it there. All you gotta do is learn the keywords. <laughs> it's impressive how uh, impressive they get. That's funny. Uh, time out real quick, Jay. Okay. Did you did you send yeah. the e- link to? Uh, Lloyd, your mind reader. Tire. Yep, coming up, camera one. Here comes Lloyd and Tyrone, uh, our final contestants here on. Contestants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we playing? I know. Well, I don't know. You play spin stupid the games. Are we playing you know, spin the stupid rate? prizes? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, what game are we playing? Anybody want to? Where, where are we? Hey, Joe, I got one for you. Do you think it's crazy for me to say, are the remarketers possibly in some trouble? Am I just being stupid? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the guy to answer that one. Uh, John, right. you have a better sense of that in his business. Well, is, what it you, too, okay. is it too early to say that? Is it coming later? Yeah, where are we on the... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't see it yet. Ty, I don't think so. Not yet. Okay. Because there's st- still not enough demand for the not enough supply. Is that what it is? Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but then when you get a guy like Ola sitting here saying, we're selling cars as fast as they land, are you just seeing no slowdown, Ola? Is that what you're saying? It's really no slowdown, to be honest. I feel like it's actually starting to pick up a little bit more. Mm. Um I've seen I've seen the pickup and uh, our numbers are starting to um, go up. Uh, Saturdays are our most busy days, and um, this part of, this past Saturday, I think we we did twelve cars, and we haven't seen double digits in a while. So, so well, that's, and that's why what we're doing is we're measuring different areas of the lake. 
right? To find the sinkhole. Um, speaking of, Lloyd is with us. Lloyd's like, wow, what an incredible introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to, I'm going to let you tell the Lloyd story, Jay. I can tell it, but I want, because Jay will really embellish it the way it needs to be. But what happened last time we were talking to Lloyd, Jay? Oh, man. Hmm. Lloyd, you tell it. <laughs> I don't remember if I said anything. I shouldn't have said. But. You were so cool. Uh, I would have been nuts. Yeah. yeah. What happened, uh, Lloyd? He was at the truck I stop. Was parked, I was parked at the truck stop at the end of the lane where I thought I was safe. And the uh, gentleman made a left-hand turn, believe it or not. Couldn't make his turn, so he backed up into my sleeper. The nose of his right corner oh, of his God. trailer got the side of my sleeper. His tandem's got my fuel tank. Hmm. Yeah, and he tried to drive off. And, uh, mm -hmm. Everybody in the meeting heard a big loud crunch as I jumped and ran. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd did it really, handled himself really. He's like, guys, All I'm right. sorry, I got to go. And I'm like, throw the phone, run. Yeah, no, you were good. And it's interesting because in the news, Pete Buttigieg is talking about truck parking. So that's interesting. Did, now, is 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 it working out? Uh $21,000 worth of damage, and it's yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're fighting it. They don't wow. want to pay it. They don't want to pay it. We're all in this together. I mean, wow. Lloyd, did, did you, when, when they did that, uh, are you incurring downtime because of uh, parts being not, not available? That's the worst right there. Yeah. I had a fuel tank that got crushed in an accident. I don't want to get into the particulars of the accident, but... Uh, we we were basically told it's 30 days before you can get a replacement tank. That's a, I, how do you run a truck without a fuel tank? <laughs> that's right. what, that's you know, the downtime. I told them, you know, look, we got to take downtime into consideration here, and downtime is going to be a whole lot more than the repair itself. Heck yeah. And so, uh, how do you feel when you're staring at 39 cents a mile on the load board? What's that feel like? Who, me? Yeah, Lloyd. How's that feel? I just ignore and move on. Yeah, I was gonna say if I'm Lloyd, I don't I don't pay much attention to that one. The Thirty nine cents. What do you? Yeah, exactly. Now that you now right, that you right. right. What's your fil What's your minimum filter on Central my minimum, Dispatch? My minimum is a dollar and a quarter a mile. Wow! You heard it That's, here first, Mister Remarketer. A buck well, twenty five. I've, I've, I've said it before in these meetings. You know, with my customers and my rates, I get paid the dead here. And, and I, uh, they, they all know, quarter of a mile loaded empty, it doesn't matter. And that's that's single car. That's one. That's per car. I'm, I'm not going to do three cars at a dollar and a quarter a mile. Did he There's say? No way. Did you say client? No, man. Customers, clients, yes. Customers. <laughs> um, but I want to kind of Ty was asking Joe as far as GM and going to the rail yard. Yes, GM is allowing dealers to send in their own transporters at the rail yard to pick up their their inventory. Wow. I yeah, got a few, yeah, I, got a few I, I was saying the same customers. Oh, Tyrone. Tyrone's here with us. Yeah, Tyrone. Same thing? Yeah, I was saying uh, I got a call from a dealer in Mobile. I said that uh, GM finally uh, sent them an email that they can go get their own vehicles because it's too, taking too long for them to get their uh, get their vehicles and everything. So uh, I got a customer now in Mobile that uh, he gets his uh, cars. I mean, no, the majority out of, of them anyway. And he said they get they, they sent an email down about about two weeks ago saying that uh, they can arrange their own transport now. So does that mean that you can pick them up and bring them back home? Because you go home to Mobile every weekend, right? No, I, I go I go to I'm staying at Jackson, but um, I got he, he wants me to you know pick his cars up out of uh, to bring them to him, whatever. So. Uh, I'll be I'll be making the detour uh, to 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 go to Mobile once uh, everything they they got the email they just went on the final I guess the final say so whatever but Jim did send the email down mm. they did send the email down man you know we can probably slide you like a five dollar bill for a copy of that <laughs> as soon as soon as I get the email <laughs> hey you know me I, I'm transparent I'm gonna show it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot He's of share the screen here it is <laughs> there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of paperwork involved with it but joe you don't, don't look too to... happy about it sorry Oops. keep going no I, I i'm not unhappy uh i'm i'm fighting allergies but oh 
what I what I would say is that uh, just having had a relationship with um, my, many of the OEMs over the years, uh, they don't make that decision lightly, and they typically you know because there's a lot of liability and exposure that 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 changes when you you know when you go outside of us uh, of of what they would call their standard process and. Uh, nothing against anybody that, you know, any of the, the smaller fleets or singles or anything like that. But uh, very frequently, uh, the, the, the challenge is insurance, you know, being able to ensure that your liability insurance and all those kinds of things are covered. Right. And that, that. that big, 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 big stumbling block. Most people that try and get into new new OEM uh, business, that's the, you know, after the equipment is out of the way and after the, the cash flow question is out of the way, the insurance is usually the big stumbling block because the, the limits for new vehicles is so high. And uh, a really good example uh, of what I'm talking about is like, if you're shipping and, and, and uh, those of you who walk in both worlds as, as uh, John and I do, um, the, when you deliver a new vehicle and you, excuse me, when you deliver a vehicle that is from a remarketing or second market, then uh, it's kind of anticipated that there are going to be signs of normal wear and tear, things that then scratches, you know, chips, things like that. That's a different ball game when you get into new OEMs. You know, if that vehicle isn't flawless, then that dealership is riding up the world. And it, the the small stuff that uh, that occurs in a second vehicle, a second a second or third owner on a vehicle, the, they sidestep a lot of state and federal disclosability laws that and consumer protections because, you know, that vehicle is not new. It's not, not being sold as new, not purported as new from a legal definition standpoint. Yes, you're ensuring the, the overall gross reasonable value of the vehicle, but you're, you know, but reasonable wear and tear is, you know, sort of standard. Well, what we would call reasonable wear and tear on a three or a five-year-old vehicle, if that appears on a new OEM vehicle, two body panels is all it takes and it's going to a crusher. So, you know, the whole paradigm shifts and the risk for insurance agencies to go from, from used to new vehicles is very substantial. And that's a big obstacle for lots and lots of people. That's, that's one of my big, you know, peeves is, you know, yes, the new car, you're, you're right, Joe, 110 percent. Um, dealing with a new vehicle, going to the OEM, insurance, you know, liability, everything, it's just a whole lot more. So yeah, my, my insurance is expensive and they, and they do, they they want you, okay, here we, are, we can have you do it, but you got to send in all this paperwork and you've got to do it. But okay, now that I've sent in all this paperwork, but how much are you going to pay? Oh, you only going to pay that much? Well, then you can keep waiting because I'm not going to haul it because, and I've mentioned this before too, you know, <laughs> Ty doesn't like it, but Copart IAA, when they pay more to haul that crushed car than the OEM <laughs> Ty does. doesn't like it. And the only thing I got to worry about is the catalytic converter. I mean, that's, that's, that's all they care about, that catalytic converter, as long as it's on that vehicle. It doesn't have a piece of glass. It's not a straight piece of metal on it. But it's paying more than that brand new OEM out of the rail yard. So, Lloyd, what's your least favorite run? My least favorite run? Yeah. Report. <laughs> Repo? No, it's just Report, report. period. I don't oh. like this. Oh, Freeport. Uh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's just I'm not going to no ports. Free port. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ports no, no, is no. the answer then. Ports. ports. All right, cool. There we go. No ports. Hey, take that candy. <laughs> ports are tough. We're changing change. the port so because we got candy. No. We're gonna change it. All right. Yeah, cha cha they, so security in ports has changed radically since I mean, forget nine eleven. In the last five years, security at ports has been a radical oh. radical. <clears throat> I, 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 I gotta I'm going to do this, if you don't mind, I'm going to have to cut out here kind of oh, quick, but sure. uh, I was listening, listening in the beginning, you know, and talking about rates and the, the low rates and stuff. And, um, these aftermarketers and, you know, but the key is people have just got to stop hauling it. You stop hauling these cheap, cheap rates, but also these guys don't know their costs and these guys that don't know their costs, they're the ones going out of business. And, you know, <clears throat> you don't know what it costs you to operate. And you're getting, let's say, five miles to the gallon. This costs me a dollar a mile just for fuel. And then you throw in the insurance and your payments and all these other things. Well, they, they have that mindset, well, coming out of Florida. Well, it'll pay for my fuel to get out of Florida. That's the wrong way to be looking at it. You know, quit hauling this cheap, cheap freight because 
it just isn't worth it. And yeah, you're going to go out of business. Um, so don't do it. But yeah, I, you know, the used cars, my, my business has really slowed down. I mean, the transitional with COVID, I used to do a lot of dealer trade stuff. Dealer trade, that's, that's history. Now it's customer delivery, customer, customer pick up their trade-ins, that kind of thing. Um, recoveries, I do a lot of recoveries. When the customer's vehicles broke down, the dealer will call me to go get that vehicle. They'll take them, I take them a loaner or else just go get that vehicle, get it back in here to the dealership. And, but here again, they know they pay me both ways, empty, loaded, it doesn't matter. But it's that relationship. You got to develop that relationship. You've got to have that trust that just that vehicle is going to get back to them without being damaged. I see so many of these guys with vehicles bumping into each other and bumpers rubbing one another. I'm like, holy smokes, what are they doing? But I don't know if you guys have noticed it lately, but I've noticed it more and more. A lot of these stingers, what's the deal with these stingers? Um, top deck loaded, nothing on the lower deck. I'm like, what the heck are these guys thinking? You know, Brian's got that one picture, you know. What are we up to <laughs> showing that hot shot with that car on top? But I see these stingers, four and five cars on top, raised up, but nothing on the bottom. I'm like, what the heck? Why are these guys doing this? And what's interesting, John or Joe will probably be able to answer that. But I want to ask you this before you go is that because Ty is kind of, again, Ty, Ty sees something down the road where we have a carrier problem, which is kind of tonight's theme. Everybody's carrier concern is an empty, upside down car hauler. Do you see, what do you, where do you stand on that? Do you see something somewhere, something? As far as the, the where it's like going, a, the business? Like a carrier. I mean, it sounds to you like your business is tighter than it used to be. And you I'm, seem to be on top of it. I'm fine. I mean, here again, I said it probably two meetings ago. I got three trucks. I'm the only driver. I have three trucks and I can cover my cost. You know, I've got two semi trucks, a hot shot, and three trailers. And it's just me. And I, I'm home. I work four and a half days a week. You know, but I, I don't do cheap. There's no need to. <clears throat> do you talk to any carriers? Pardon? Do you talk to any other carriers on the road at the transport parking lot? What do you hear? What do you see? I, I'm, I'm usually go, go, go. I yeah. did have a young man, a Spanish gentleman, walk up to me the other day. And he loaded a vehicle on the back of his trailer. It didn't have a clue how to tie it down. And he had the, the brave enough to walk over to me and ask for help to tie down his vehicle. I know a little bit of Spanish, enough to communicate with the gentleman. And I showed him how to tie it down, you know, to keep it safe. And I just, I thought, this is what's out here. This is what's in the market. These people are getting into this industry. They don't have a clue to what they're doing. And so that drives our insurance sky high. And so it, yeah, it hurts me big time yeah. because, you know, people think, well, what I do doesn't affect you. Well, it does because that insurance company, they're going to recover their costs one way or the other. And so it, it affects all of us. It goes up. But what can we do to change it? You know, Lawrence, I haven't seen Lawrence in a while, but you know, Lawrence talked once about training. Yeah, you train these people, but they they got to ask for help and they've got to approach them. Mm -hmm. but, well, it's, then there's the cost of training. Um, yeah. Hey, so Rob says the market's oversaturated with carriers trying to survive, so they're taking the cheap loads. Lloyd, yeah. thanks for coming on. I'm going to let right. you go. We'll, we'll stay in touch because we got other Wait. things to talk about, too. Before, go ahead. before Lloyd goes, I want to answer his question. I'm just wondering when you're saying the stingers are loaded on the top and the bottom, they're probably dropping their bottom cars. They're probably doing multiple drops. Yeah, but this is this isn't in town. This is open highway. Um, I mean, long distance between cities and stuff. Is it Carvana? Because Carvana seems to do that often. No, I haven't seen much of the day cab. Mm. This is more big sleeper cabs. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, so I think I think it touches on uh, a comment that was just made a minute ago about training. And um, in my life, you know, in this business, training is like one of the most important. Uh, things that we can do to perpetuate the health of this industry and uh, extremely I'm not, I'm not going to name names or anything but uh, extremely recently some larger organizations who hired an incredible sum of people um, put them through what they felt was a good training period or a good training cycle and a lot of those people have 
through various means found their way out elsewhere into the market and tried to continue their career in the car hauling industry with the uh, basically telling employers that, oh yeah, I'm fully trained. I've done, you know, I've been working for so-and-so for, you know, X number of months or, you know, whether it's six or 12 or 18 or 24, whatever. And then they come and we find out that the training that they were given is not satisfactory to the standards of the industry. Uh, that they are, that they take shortcuts, they, you know, the people who showed them how to properly use the equipment were never really car haulers themselves. And this is a craft. Like, this is a thing that you, you need someone from experience, a position of experience to teach. You know, you, it's, it, there are always exceptions. Someone can go to YouTube University and figure stuff out. I, I'm sure that, you know, there's some, someone out there that'll tell me I'm wrong. But uh, the, the best car haulers are the ones who learn from the best car haulers. And I think that um, I think that there's a lot of that on the market right now from at least one very, very large employer that, that sort of dumped employees out at a very sudden notice. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks guys. Have a good evening, Jay, Ty. Hey, give it thanks, up. thanks so Lloyd. much, Lloyd. Thank you for joining thanks, us. Hey. Joe, nice John, to meet you. Yeah. Bye, Bye. Bye. Hey John, when when you were on, when you and I were on the show last, you were struggling with hiring new people. Are you still still dealing? Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm good. I got three guys in the trucks now. We did good. Good for you. Yeah, it's uh, it worked out pretty good. Um, thank God they all got experience. Um, but uh, yeah, we're good. We're back in business. <laughs> good for you. It was hurting me. Three trucks sitting was not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of cost to carry. Yeah, you ain't kidding. So, but we we uh, we have been uh, we still are on a hiring spree at Midwestern, and um, uh, I think a lot of it. What I've experienced, and John, I don't know if you've seen this on on your side as a carrier, or Tyrone. It, it sounds like you're a carrier, so you might have seen this from maybe a little different vantage point. But the confidence in the industry, I think, is pretty shaky right now because of just how discombobulated the supply chain is not just in manufacturing, but like just, you know, on the whole, it seems like uh, a lot of people, whereas in the first half of the year, I had a lot of people very enthusiastic to try and learn the business. It's kind of tapered down a little bit. That's exactly what Ty says. Yeah. Identical. Ding. I'm Keep saying, going. sorry, Joe. <laughs> I'm no, no, that's, that was it. <laughs> oh, I'm just wondering what's happening to the loyalty too. I mean, we on our side, we're loyal, but for some reason they just, uh, I don't know if they just know that they can go somewhere else. I mean, they know that there's a demand for car, car, you know, haulers. And um, yeah. they just, I don't know. Hopefully we got a good crew. We can take care of them and keep them around. Ola kind of made some good points though. Cause I'm sure Ola, Ola, you probably, You've been there for a little while. You've been doing this, you know. You used to go to the auction. You don't go as much. You're buying cars in the lane. You're buying cars from people and walking down the sidewalk. You probably had or still have, I would assume, you still have a relationship with the transport guy. Let me call it my transport guy. Not the new car guy, but the used car guy. Let me call my transport guy. You got that? Is Am I right? Used to, do, still? Yeah. So it's not that you're really like, I'm not going to call my transport guy. I just We don't need him. So this is where I step in. I say, if you're a transport guy and you haven't heard from Ola in a week, a month, you need to get out of the truck, hop in the car and go see what Ola's doing, right? Or at least give the guy a call. So is that is that what you're saying, Ola? I mean, is that kind of what? So that, that, that's kind of where it is right now with, um, with, with transport. Uh, somebody mentioned, uh, I think it was Joe, when he spoke about, you know, damages being turned down to vehicles. And I was going to ask him a question. Mm -hmm. In between the seaport, um, the rails, and the car hauler, where does the most damage come from? Because, you know, it seems like ever since, you know, you know who allowed, you know, just uh, car dealerships to pick up their own cars, we've been seeing more damages. Like the past two months, uh, I've had to send about five vehicles to the body shop, new cars. I can answer that, I can answer that from my standpoint, uh, Ola. 
So okay. I, I run out, I run out the rails every day. Every single day I run out the rails. So uh, down here, it's, it's two things. You got one, the people that are pulling the cars off, off, off the rail heads. Uh, that's causing a lot of damage. And them not actually securing the cars in the in the um in the in the train good enough. So I I run out of out of uh Union Pacific out of out of Mesquite, Texas a lot and I run out of uh out of uh Alliance, which is in Fort Worth, which is Hasslet. The damage out of Hasslet is like slim to none. I don't know what they're doing different than what's going on in Mesquite. I know if I move, if I move 30 cars a week out of Mesquite, 20 of them are gonna be damaged. And they're all gonna oh. be damaged the same, they're gonna, they're all gonna be damaged at the same place. The front bumpers, the grill, the back bumpers, the back uh, uh, lid deck. So them, them cars are bumping into each other. Now, I'm not gonna say you got some transporters that, you know, don't take the time, don't know how to properly strap, you know what I'm saying, don't know how to properly load. You have that more so than none. But I consider myself a damn good car home. I take my time, I make sure that I spec and I make sure everything is good, I make sure I got enough space. So if I do have a, a failure in the strap, I still have enough room where I can recover. So, but a lot of these vehicles are coming out, out of these trains damaged. I'm talking about damaged bad. I don't know about you know uh, any other red as far as in the, uh, in, the, in the other states, but down here from what I've experienced, when I come out of Mesquite, I, if, I, if I move 15 got to cars a day, five of them are damaged. And it's every single day. May I ask from what from what state? This from Texas. Texas. Okay. Mesquite and Alliance yeah. are in Texas. Um, so yeah. I, I got to be careful here because I don't want to um, uh, poke a, poke anybody in the eye, poke any manufacturer in the eye, um, or anything like that. I I, I don't think that um, I don't think that what you're seeing, Ola, is normal. Uh, normal business, uh, and what I mean by that is no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, uh, under normal circumstances, you know, do do vehicles jump chalk? Yeah, it happens. Uh, like Toronto, it's not never. Uh, do do bumpers touch? Yeah, it happens. Not never. Generally speaking, a four a, a four strap vehicle that's properly spaced inside on a car carrier can lose two of its straps and never move. So, true. sorry, I said you're true. You're right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's pretty hard for, for you know, again, properly spaced is the key. And you can't account for a degree of skill. But you got to think a little bit about what else is happening in the industry to answer your question. Um, manufacturers are building tens of thousands of vehicles that are not immediately getting put into the transportation network because they're missing semiconductors or whatever other parts that they were not, that the supply chain is struggling with filling. Chips. So none of the assembly plants in North America have enough space to supply or to be able to store more than a certain amount of days of production. These places kick out between 1,000 and 2,000, sometimes 2,500 units a day. That is a lot of real estate that you have to be able to, that, you know, that, and it gets filled very, very quickly. And especially the older assembly plants where the, the towns have kind of grown up around them, the space is extremely constrained. These units have to be shuttled to some other place to wait for completion so that that way they can, you know, be, you know, later handled again. So what I'm getting at here in, in let's say 2018, 2019, a unit would be touched at most four times before it got to a dealership, you know, Sometimes six, if it was, if it came by sea vessel. Today, you know, the units are going back and forth from one lot to the other because you know this batch is missing chip, that batch is missing steering wheels, that batch is missing emblems, that batch is missing, you know, what whatever thing. And so, the more times that these vehicles are handled in the process before they get taken to final delivery, the greater the chance for exceptions to occur. Where are they going to occur? Exactly the same place that Tyrone said. Bumpers, grill, side, lower side panels. You know, these vehicles, very, you know, how often are these vehicles stored on asphalt or concrete? 
as many as as much as the manufacturers can, but it's not always, you know, sometimes gravel, you know, so that's where you see this kind of stuff happen. And you know, again, I don't want to throw anyone, you know, and, and, and call out anyone because it's a universal problem. It's a, it's a serious issue. The assemblies plants are, are forced with two bad choices, build units that they know they can't ship or shut down an assembly plant and cost themselves a fortune in every day of lost production day after day after day. And because the demand is so high, they're going to go with choice A. They have to. So uh, I think what you're seeing is really just a reflection of how many times vehicles are touched before it gets to you. And right now, that is abnormally high. Um, w will that explain the fact that it, it's a particular route that always has this damage? Because, you know, um, different brands have uh, different um, uh, uh, factories and, um, you know, coming from all over, you know, Mexico, Canada, you know, you know, Michigan, you know. Because it's just a particular route, and I'm talking about this route through, you know, Savannah, Dixiana, yep. down here. Makes yeah, sense. It, it it could be, you know, it could be. It depends a lot on on the you know. You'd have to really go chasing back the you know the origin and see where they're built and what you know kind of go through the history and that kind of thing. But uh, it could be a particular route. It could be that there's multiple touches. Uh, it could be, and and again, at this like this. I don't know your particular situation scenario, but um, shipping a vehicle, sometimes they'll shuttle from, you know, from like a port to a mixing center and then from a mixing center it goes to final delivery. Well, that extra touch could be all it takes. Um, it's also possible. I've seen it happen where rail cars that are routed uh, across the, the border in, you know, from Mexico into Texas. Right normal amount of damage on them because just of the rigors of traveling through that particular route you know uh one time kind of a funny story is way back in my career but uh they busted open a bunch of rail cars matter of fact this was in port newark uh busted open a bunch of rail cars and um you if you've ever seen the artwork that's sprayed on these rail cars i mean it's, it's some of it's really incredible you know? yeah doing with a spray can they could be yeah, you know they could be the next picasso they're doing incredible work and you know you see you see well anyway, they busted open a rail car that had uh, that had just had apparently a fresh coat of of decoration put on it and all the cars inside had tiny little full-sized multi-colors it looked like uh oh my god like gogan had decided to spot you know all these polka dot cars multiple colors that came out so you know it's incredible the things that you hear about and that you see in the you know, industry. As that would be around. a noticeable auto transport brand, right? Tag all your trucks on purpose. Yeah, that, that th those oh. probably were not sold as new, Jay. Those probably were. Uh, <laughs> no. Thank you, Joe. That that was helpful. That was. It was interesting. Good job. Oh, well, so, all right. So I wrote down takeaways. All right. And I got a blank half a page here because as we've looked at the picture in full and then gone in and looked and measured, um, everybody's carrier concerns. I'm not sure I have a concern, but I always enjoy watching Ola and Tyrone and Joe and John and uh, Lloyd, I love watching these connections and hearing people like, you know, Tyrone knows what Joe's talking about and John knows what Ola, and it's these people, by the way, if you're watching this or listening to it, nobody's in the same little town. I mean, we're, we're all spread out pretty far here, pretty wide, uh, about Midwest, I think. And so from Midwest East, this is really cool because these are real dialogues with real people that are doing real life and their stories are pretty much a match. Am I right? So anyway, thanks for coming on the show. It really the means live a lot. chat. The <laughs> live chat has the same vibe. Is it live? See, I yeah. can't see live chat. Is it popping? Oh, yeah, it's happening. It's, it's very, yeah. Getting back to your question, um, it, it basically is insurance. And then I think employees after that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, well, <laughs> we're about to go through a, an insurance renewal cycle. So ask me in three yeah. weeks if I think about all that. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a headache. It, it's bad, you know? Yeah, I would say uh, my main, my biggest concern right now uh, is, uh, is it's always going to be drivers. It always starts with people. Everything in this business starts with people. And yep. uh, I think that finding, um, I really believe that there is a confidence that is shaken in our business because of the recent events, um, you know, with the supply chain tightening. And, you know, you can hardly, you know, the news is replete with gloom and doom stories. And I saw a thing on uh, CNBC, I think you actually posted this on one of your things, uh, Jay, about how you could see all the super duties in Kentucky Speedway from space because they've got so many of them stored. Uh, and it's like, I think there is a lot of shaken uh, confidence in the business as a result of that. And so um, we're not seeing the same amount of, uh, of, of drivers that are willing to enter into this business and learn this crap. That, that would be my biggest concern right now. Is there any solution to that problem? And are there any groups that could focus on that problem and potential solution. That's a kind of a bipartisan issue if you think about it. I mean, no, nobody, I don't care what your stripes are, wants to see the economy go backwards. But mm. here we are today, and again, not a partisan comment, but here we are today and every indication is pointing towards interest rates rising and inflation and you know all these kinds of things and uh we can we can complain and gripe about whose fault it is all day long but it's not doesn't seem to be stopping it uh i i think um you know the best thing to do the best thing that i've been able to do is to explain to people just straight up hey this is a, a weird time in our business um you know we're going to do our level best to be responsible uh, through this weird time and we're going to do our level best to keep you working because the feast will come it always does uh, hopefully it's sooner rather than later and our business is highly seasonal um, you know so we we are we're going through a pullback right now and I think we're going to see a, a, a pretty radical increase in business towards the tail end of this year at least I hope I, I don't know answer other than just keep communicating that to as many people as we can to answer your question, Jay. Well, I'm going to throw on top of that this final thought, concern, whatever you want to call it. I was telling somebody about the show today and I said, you, so they're like, man, it sounds terrible. How do you survive this? And Joe's, Joe said it several times and Joe's right. It's the relationship. John's got the relationship. Joe has the relationship. Tyrone has his relationships. Ola has his relationships and I'm, I mean, technology is great. I'm sure we all appreciate it in some form or fashion, but I'm, I'm saying if you're going to make it through and maybe succeed it, Joe's right. Is that if, if I hear Joe saying relationships, I think that's important. And then with the drivers even. So yeah, that's it. There's my concern. Get to work on your relationship skills. The drivers are the ambassadors and diplomats of our business. Oh, yeah. Amen. Preach it. Well, Good. and Lloyd is an example of a small business building relationships, managing cost. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And he, so he's yeah. doing all those things where he's cutting, he's cutting expenses where he can, building mm -hmm. relationships where he can, mm -hmm. and then just to weather the storm. Right. And talk to dealers. I mean, seriously, you know, I know. Tyrone and I, we've had plenty of talks. I'm like, dude, well, you're at a dealership. Talk to a guy. What's going on in the used side? What's going on in the new side? And, you know, paying attention to ATI, I'm not saying it's going to help your conversation, but it's certainly, we, we throw around enough words. If you just picked up one or two of them and threw them at a dealer, it's a great conversation starter. Does that make sense? So kind of understand what's going on in the market, the car market, the car industry. We try to provide that. It's available information everywhere, but, uh, I like what I hear Paul and the car guys say this. Ola probably says it too, but it's now's a really good time to keep it clean and lean. <laughs> so probably works for the transport guy too. 
But anyway, thank you, everybody. That was an amazing show. I'll, I'll, it, wow. was, it was. It's almost over. Um, oh. I want to say this. I want to say this is that, um, and then we're going to pass it around and let everyone finish. But um, the LinkedIn post from tonight's show is still blowing up. I mean, Mike Buchanan's in there. Will Morris is in there. Paul Machine had something to say. The live chat is doing great. Got a lot of activity, lots of great points, and um, and right on target conversation. It's not random. And I think I think what what we're getting at here is that Ty and I notice in other verticals high impact with some folks bringing up important topics and 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 and, and beating that drum. My hope is that there's in some way we're building more momentum towards the things that need to be discussed and hopefully in our own media way we can help um that's my hope that's my takeaway of course i'm six years invested so i'm pretty biased at this point hola i i i think to finish off here jay i i think what's important is that there's a lot of different um types of auto transport businesses and what he's used to doing as far as you know auction work and dealership work a lot of times when it's up happening and that's a local guy that's just a local guy that's that's in that area that's going to do your work he's going to take care of your dealer stuff going to the auction in my my type of business i do that but i have to keep certain trucks to do that and then i have to keep certain trucks to do my snowbirds and then my the work that I do for the brokers, I have guys that do that too. So when you're first starting out, most of the guys are just going to be starting out, you know, doing local work for their dealers and stuff like that and taking stuff off of Central. And then from there, they're going to build their business and, and go up to where we're at now, you know. There are so it, many markets, aren't there? It does make sense, right? It's it's basically what happens. They see it happen more than once in this type of business. You know, somebody will start out with a wedge, um, and th then they build themselves up to a, a stinger, and they go from there. John, would you say that patience, your, your patience has served you well in that? Because, I mean, surely you can't just leap into those investments and, and just, you know, uh, hope for the best unless you're just lucky. <laughs> Maybe that's better. But. Uh, we, 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 we see it all the time. We talk about it all the time. And the whole thing was is that um, we, we're going to have to make some changes pretty soon because um, one does take away from the other. And you know what happens when the birds start going south. You know, all of a sudden everybody wants stuff coming north. Right. And, you know, but you don't see these guys a whole year. They're going to get mad. They're not going to give you work. So you can't do that. So, you know, it's just the way it is. And sometimes you have to just give it to somebody else and let them do it. A question, has the hurricane made a significant noticeable impact on snowbird season? Oh, um, yeah, definitely. A lot, less, a lot of people are holding off. They're, they're either trying to get their stuff back together, trying to get their houses back together. Some of them <laughs> don't even know if their house is still there. They're going down to check it out. So everybody's got us on a hold right now. Um, I think once they get things cleaned up, then we're going to get a big rush again. So I got a question. I got a question for, uh, for uh, anybody. The new guy that comes in, uh, and, and you know, he's trying to start his business or whatever, and he goes to these dealerships. And like me, when I first started out, I, I went to every dealership within 40 miles, handing out business cards, talking to people. Them knowing I'm gonna start, you know, and you know the ins and outs, or whatever. So, what what does a new guy, what does a new guy that, that that's out here trying to start off, give it to, to, with the um with the dealerships, but the dealerships rather work with work with the brokers than work with with a carrier. What would that guy do besides besides going central? Because you go to central, man, you you go under going central. It is what it is. I mean, I try to I I look at central, but like it is it just ain't working. You know what I mean? So what do that new guy do that is trying to start, but he's trying when he when he goes to these dealerships and they like, well, we don't work with with, with carriers, we only work with brokers. You got to go through this broker, go through that broker, go through the broker. What does he do? 
And then, and then once you go to work with that broker, you know, I, when you, you know, a new guy, your authority ain't that new if you got your own authority. So, you know, it'll be kind of hard to work with certain brokers because, you know, you ain't got, you know, so many uh, ratings on Central or whatever the case may be. So what what does that guy do? <laughs> That's it. Um, you're basically going to have to do a lot of work. You're going to have to set yourself up, get a broker package, all that stuff together. Make sure your insurance is in place just, just to get there, to do that type of work. But then you're going to end up committing yourself to them. And with one truck, it's going to be hard. It really is going to be hard. Um, <clears throat> if, I, if I could say something, um, the new guy, I think the new guy should start from the bottom. I think he should take whatever he can, start start small and start right. And the way he starts is the is is it's gonna be the only way that he's gonna go up. If if he starts, you know, not doing it right or cutting corners, then she's gonna remain there. But if, if you if you if you pull your weight and you know do it right, you definitely gonna go up. It's it's a matter of it's not if, it's it's when. Well, and that's where things have changed a lot. You know, I used to be the guy, I still am the guy, just go talk to car dealers. You just heard me say it a minute ago. There's part part two, how do we talk to the car dealer? Are we talking to the right person? Sometimes when we go in and drop off a card, the guy's A, the wrong person to talk to, B is gonna tell you, yeah, we only use brokers. But you <laughs> walk around the corner and you talk it to a guy, say, that's selling the cars, and you start asking him, how are things going? He said, well, I hate, I'm waiting on cars. They should have been here. Oh, man, we got a problem. You start figuring out where do you get your cars. So we buy them over here at this place. Nobody ever picks them up. Uh, so <clears throat> there's, you know, there's, there's, I don't know if you want to call it a course, but yeah, who are we talking to? What are we talking to them about? Are we just giving them our card and they're telling us we use a broker and go away? Now, the, the, the other angle that Ty's had to change his tune on quite a bit is, is no, you're right. Uh, we do need to, just, the little guy just starting out, does need the load board. Um, I'm not a load board fan at all. Get to sign up with ACV, Ready Logistics. Get to know Joe at Midwestern Card Carriers. Get to know John Larrick at Larrick's Transportation and get plugged in with a broker that does know what they're doing and, and but this is where i this is where i get a little crazy because i'm like everybody's going to ask you to go do the load that nobody wants to do as a new guy just like ola said everybody's going to ask you go do the load that nobody else is going to do but I, I might do that load if it's in my lane i might go do the load that nobody wants to do if it's in my lane but i'm going to be real hesitant to go do something for somebody that is nothing where I want to go. Is that fair? And, and I followed Ty's advice. This was an experiment I ran. It was some time ago. It was probably pre-COVID. I don't load and transport cars, but I walked into two dealerships. I talked, handed out my card, said whatever I said, and both guys, one guy said, yeah, talk to Al. He moves all of our cars. So I knew, okay, talk to Al whatever that means, wherever that goes. And then the other, the other was an import export and I had a conversation with them and I, I did get a guy's car and the guy was like, well, yeah, you know, you know, follow up with us later. But that was two for, I was two for two and I don't even move cars. You, you got You got to sell yourself. They got to take the time and sell themselves. If you don't, it's the same thing with central central gets you into the door. Um, especially if it's a local deal or something, and then you can find out where he's buying from and stuff and maybe pick up a customer that way. But that's that's what Central is good for. Get you in the door. Steve Jobs said the world was made by people no smarter than you. <laughs> I think Gentlemen, the, I go think ahead, the relationships are key. I'm yeah. going to echo what everybody said. I think we all say that. It's the weirdest thing. We all say it. I don't know what we're doing. Mm. Yeah, no, that's BS. I mean, I love, but, I love Joe, what we're I doing mean, here. This I, I was telling somebody right about here. Joe. Who was I? I was talking. Hold on. Am I on mute? I was talking no, to somebody good. about Joe today. This is funny, Joe. I, I don't wish I, I knew who it was. 
And I was like, Joe, Joe's <laughs> oh, now long, I'm afraid. <laughs> a long history of hauling cars, right? I mean, you go way back to what didn't you say you started with Jack Cooper? Is that where you started? No, no I started with uh, Ryder commercial carriers. Yeah, way back. Yep. So in, for a guy like Joe to be sitting here on a YouTube channel and talking about relationships is really a big deal. And it really means something. And a guy like John Lyric to say that that really is big and really means something. So if you're not going to listen yeah. to me, listen to these two guys. <laughs> you know, Thank um, you. <laughs> the fact is putting putting together tonight's show, we worked really hard. We wanted uh, diversity across the segment, right, um, with where with what it is that we do. And um, we got a real amazing panel here again. And so Ty and I are really excited. Yeah. That. And Joe, yeah, thanks yeah. for saying, hey, we're, I'm available. That, yeah. Yeah. That's that cool. like, sorry, that was a weird, weird, weird uh, schedule thing there, but worked out. We all have it, though. I mean, we all have crazy schedules. And so. Well, and I'm happy that we got a car dealer in here. So thank you, Ola. I, I, was, I was just yeah. going to say, I'm really happy to have connected with you, Ola. That was a very lucky... Well, Candy did that, so thank you, Candy, thank you, Jay. for introducing us to Ola. Yeah. Yeah. Services. Yeah. Exporter for Tyrone. Thank and you, Tyrone, buddy. Tyrone, you were on the car shipping roundtables. I'm, I'm now awake. I'm out of my coma, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Tyrone. Joe, it was nice. Uh, thank you, Jay. Thank you, Ty. Oh, man. We so appreciate much, you, buddy. Guys. All right. Yes, John, sir. thank you very much. Uh, no, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, John, have a good night. Good night. You too. Yes, sir. Good to talk to you guys. Yeah. And if anybody needs contact info, here we go. I'll just hit the magic end button. Thanks, everybody. Uh, oh, and there it is. Cut. If anybody needs, if you, you know, if you saw somebody speak and you really want to connect with them, let me know uh, because we really do want to help connect folks with other folks. And uh, I'm so happy. Uh, thanks, everybody, in the live chat. So much great back and forth. I didn't have a chance to read everything, um, but I, I do go back and I, because I, I save a copy of it. And I, I love it. I'm really, really happy with what's happening here. It's, it's, it's taken forever, um, but that's auto transport. <laughs> it takes forever to get where you're trying to go. Um, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Candy and Chris for those super chats. Um, I want to thank Location Services, Superflow Systems, Murphy Auto Transport, Rapid Recon, Pre-Owned Auto Logistics, and again, my panel tonight, um, John Larrick at Larrick's Transport, Joe Bercari of Midwestern, Ola, Car Dealer Inventory. We're going to be learning more about Ola coming up. I have a feeling he'll be, definitely will be back. Um, Tyrone Mixon, Owner Operator Car Hauler, works more in the new segment. Lloyd Vanover, Oper, o, Owner Operator Car Hauler, works more in the used and the wedge segment. So it's great to have um, that diversity of the verticals. Carriers, dealers, auctions, man, we hit all of it tonight, as well as current market factors, demand, drivers, etc. So if we, there's something we missed and you're just darn sure of it, let us know how we can help. You can send in the news, send it to autotransportintel at gmail.com. You know, we're here several days a week, evenings, noons. And in between. So let us know how we can help. Thank you so much for being a part of episode 262 in a row on a Tuesday night. Okay, Jay, heard enough. Here comes the car hauler. Thanks. Please join us tomorrow at noon on Live Carrier Advice with Brian Riker. Thanks, everybody. Take care.